Hello everyone, this is Valhalla Gaming TV, and this is the channel that plays everything, so you don't have to. Today we are going to play Botany Manor. Uh, all I know about this game is it's about flowers, and we're in a manor. And I'm going to go and, uh, I'm going to grow flowers, okay? And you guys are going to watch. Let's get into it. 1890, Botany Manor, Summer Rest. Or, Somerset. Mess that up. Oh, wow. I oh, just got right into it. Oh, that a cactus? We got a cactus. Okay, let's see what we got to do here. Oh, that's kind of cool. Nice little greenhouse. Oh, got paper. Lady Arabella, we're so happy to have you back at Botany Manor. I hope you had a lovely trip. In your absence, I'm afraid some things in the manor have deteriorated. Though I can assure you, we tried our best to keep things in order. I hope it doesn't affect your research too much today. Bennett. Okay. What's this? Collect the parcel. A Bella Green. Oh, that's cool. Nice little animation. Forgotten Flora. An herbarium by Arabella Green. Open her up. Dear Arabella Green, thank you once again for submitting your book proposal, Forgotten Flora. Please send this empty herbarium uh, back to us once you have completed your research and will be in touch with a potential offer. Sincerely, Mayflower Publishing House. I like how it's all got the flower stuff going on in green. All right. Forgotten Flora, researched and compiled by Arabella Green. Maps, chapter one, fresh start. What kind of maps we got here? Browns. Oh, this must be the manor. Nice. We gotta fill this bad boy up. We got some stained glass windows. Look at those things. Okay. Let's get this book filled up. Sure is foggy. A fresh start. Chapter one. A new plant was added. How do I open that thing? Um, Press Y. Okay, we got it. Gotta press Y. Fresh start. I want to grow the windmill wart to filter the smoggy air in my conservatory, but I'll need to research it, its temperature requirements first. Okay. So, windmill wart. Um, we gotta get rid of all this, uh, this fog in here. Let's see, this must be it. Collect seeds. Alright. Oh, look at that. That's pretty cool. We got a seed. Potting instructions. Place pot on saucer, add soil to pot, plants a seed, and water the seed. Easy enough. Seed inventory. Okay, we got the pot. It's already placed on it. We gotta get the soil. Plant the seed. And water that bad boy up. Oh yeah. There we go. Windmill wart. So now what? Just wait for it to grow. I pick no, I don't want to pick it up. Put it back. There it goes. Alright, I guess we're just gonna wait on that one. And what's this? Oh, the temperature. Will it move? Okay, we got it in Celsius. Maybe we gotta go this way. I'm seeing if the plant is going to make any movement. Ooh, maybe we don't want to get that. Okay. Let's hold on for a second. Let's go do some more research. Ah. Oh. Newspaper. Somerset Gazette, 19th of September, 1890. Somerset falls victim to industrial smog. I can barely see. Horse bus driver refuses to work in these conditions. Okay. So maybe I gotta grow the plants to fix the area. Postcard from Marianne. Let's see what it says. To Lady Arabella Green, Botany Manor. Who in England? Okay, dearest Arabella. On my hike, I came across the windmill wart, a flower that only grows in Sicily. Some locals told me the flower bud has air purifying qualities, but due to its bespoke temperature requirements, the plant rarely blooms. Maybe the flower could help with the smog pollution in your conservatory. Your friend in Pierre, Marianne. Okay, but it's not telling me the temperature. Open. 
important clues get added to the herbarium or herbarium uh, where you can assign them to plants. If you're stuck, tracking clues can help you organize and validate your research. Oh, I can add a clue? Postcard. Nice. Yeah, so we need a temperature requirement, but I'm trying to figure that out. Or maybe we just gotta guess. Let's see what this says. Oh, ideal soil temperatures. Here's something. It said in uh, Spain, Portugal, France, Greece, Sicily. So we're looking at Sicily. 30 degrees. What kind of flower is that? Let's see. Oh, here we go. Windmill wards. It's a volcanic flower. So it's a volcanic flower, so we need a temperature of 60 degrees Celsius. Let's put that in the thing for clues. Look at that. This is pretty cool. Okay, let's get that 60 degrees Celsius. All the way up. Boom. Alright, windmill wart. We got your temperature. Now I think we just wait. That's 60. Volcanic flower. Yeah, 60C. What about over here? Okay, we can't go through there yet. Let's see what else we do here. Water the seed. Maybe we water again? No, nope, won't let us. Can I put it over here somewhere? Ah, here we go. Open heat vent. Ah, there it goes. So that should warm the place up. Oh, okay, okay. We gotta grab this, and we gotta take this over to the heat vent. And now we gotta warm it up. 60C. There you go. Look at it go. Nice. Wow, that's very cool. Oh, look. Nice. Achievement unlocked. Windmill wart. Grow the windmill wart. We did it. The windmill wart naturally grows in volcanic soil, which is why it requires a soil temperature of 60 degrees Celsius. The bud contains air purifying qualities, so the flower can filter its environment from dense smog. But we got no smog in this conservatory no more. Yeah. All right. Next area. Okay, so it's like a puzzle game, but with uh, flowers. It's really cool, though. Is there any running? I don't think there's any... Oh, yep, yeah, there is. Oh, I can take a seat. Let's just, oh, achievement. Take a break. Sit down on a seat. Yeah, let's just enjoy the look of nature here. Yeah. The art style is pretty cool, too. Drawings from nature. Can we open it? No. What else we got around here? Make sure we look at everything. We got some mushrooms. It's a nice place. Oh, pretty. Okay, let's go through this area. See what we got next. It's like a mushroom statue. Man, they got like a freaking castle. It's a nice place. You gotta have a lot of money to have all this. Okay, so there's an entrance to a castle, and we got this over here. I want to check out the castle first. I guess it's a gatehouse. Let's see, what do we got here? Oh, a we got a key. Entrance garden. Okay. Got a post box. I am currently busy researching. Please leave all deliveries in the gatehouse and ring the bell, Arabella. Oh, I called it. Ring the bell. So please all leave deliveries in the gatehouse. Home of the Green family. 
Okay, let's ring the bell. I don't think we got any deliveries ready, but... Okay, no, th uh, they would bring deliveries to the gatehouse and then ring it. Okay, that's cool. Alright. I was right, though. It was a gatehouse. Called it. Let's go through this one. I got the key for it. Well, I guess good thing I went there first. Look at that house. My goodness. And a whole freaking castle, man. Oh, wow. Okay. Take another break. There we go. Nice little view. Is that an egg up there? It's a furry egg. What is that thing? Just a plant. Oh, we got stuff here. Got a cane. A walking stick. Let's read this. Letter from Eleanor. Clover Gardens, April 1889. My dear friend, good luck on your travels. I would have loved to join you like in your younger days, but your tells about the trip will suffice when we meet next. I will never forget the Maria Jackson passage you once highlighted to me. In examining plates, you can take the authority of others, whereas in botany, as in all other things, we can make little progress if we do not see for ourselves. Well, now you must travel and see some interesting specimens for yourself. I'm inspired and look forward to hearing all about it. Your friend always, Eleanor. Eleanor, my friend, sent me a message. Alright, let's uh, head towards the manor. These things are cool, though. Like purple egg plants. Anything over here? I like to search everything, okay? I, whoa, what's that? There's stuff down there. I can see through the floor. I got them botany eyes. Okay, apparently they rudely blocked the way with a table. Alright, we're not going that way. Let's go into the building. I'm sure it'll take us back out here later if we need to. Ooh, we got another plant coming? Okay, we got that seed, but we need some other ones, I guess. Let's see what we got. Ooh, another chair. I guess it just wants us to sit around and enjoy the scenery. Let's see what this says. Hopgood Household, 1890. My dearest Arabella, I hope this letter finds you well as you set off for London on your important trip. The thought of you in the bustling city, working on your ambitions, both excites and worries me. Time has indeed passed, and yet your determination for your field remains inspiring to me. I never imagined all those years ago that we would be writing to each other in our fifth decade around such endeavors. I look forward to hearing about your progress, and of course let me know how I can be of assistance upon your return. Your loving sister, Elizabeth. I find that we gotta read uh, these because they're gonna be clues in some of them. Oh, look at that. It's a white duck. I got an achievement for it. Quack, quack. Inspect the duck. Okay, we gotta go look around for everything. Oh, door open. Wow. Chapter 2. New pla Two new plants added. Okay, we got the chapter 1 done. I came across the Fulguria when I was caught in a terrible thunderstorm. I'm interested to learn more about its growth and requirements. Look at all those clues. Seed packet location grand staircase. And then we got the ash bloom. And this might be a tough case to crack. Seed packet rose garden. Okay, let's find the first one. Oh, there it is right there. Black seeds. Fulgaria. Okay, we gotta learn all about the Fulgaria. What do we got here? A blurry photograph. Camera experiment 1. 1890 I purchased the new camera and flash lamp to document my flowers. The picture looks a little blurry, though. I'll have to investigate the camera setting. Okay. And that's a darker one, so apparently they keep messing with it. The picture is so dark, impossible to see the flower. I can't believe how quickly I've run out of the incredible expensive flash powder. And then this is the good one. Look at that. Well-lit photograph. I'm very pleased with the picture. Looks like I'm getting the hang of the new camera. 
Nice. Okay, we got a door there. Arabella's parents. What do we got over here? Nothing. So that looked like it was a picture of the flower, but didn't look like a clue. Train ticket. Great Western Railway. Taunton to London Paddington. Issue the return journey. First class. Elderly discount applied. Okay. That old lady discount. That's a nice fireplace. What is this thing? Like a whole tree growing in here. It's like it might... Okay. I don't know if it's blocking the way. Let's see what this says. From... A oh, letter from genealogists. Oh, they're talking about the family tree. Lady Arabella Green, I am pleased to let you know that your family tree is complete. As per your request, I have altered the customary presentation. Now displaying the maidens, maiden names of the ladies in your family, rather than their current names acquired through marriage. Should you require any further adjustments or have additional inquiries, I remain at your service. Yours, Robert Hinchley, genealogist. And that must be the family tree. Cool. Okay. Look back on that if there's a need. Is there any of those names that match it? We see Green, Hopgood, Goodfellow, Williamson, Pendleton, Deal, and Gilly. Okay. I don't think I see anything about the plant. We gotta make sure we sit in all the chairs. Gotta take the breaks and all the ones. Look at that. Man, they got like a huge sunroof up there. Okay. We got a kitchen. Dartmoor. All the year round. Home to breathtaking sights. Town tour. Westman's Woods. Becky Falls. The Dartmoor line. Oh, that must be a train line. And what do we got here? What was that sound? Sound like we found something. Curiosities of the natural world. Pyrophiles. Fire has the potential to be among the most devastating force of nature. Despite this, humans have developed the ability to invent, wield, and attempt to manage it. Meanwhile, certain species in the plant kingdom have evolved to adapt and flourish in the face of the fire as well. For example, in areas where forest fires occur frequently, pyrophiles have learned to rely on fire as a crucial part of their life cycle. Oh, they're talking about uh, plants and stuff. That probably do better after they burn. Uh, there's, let's, let's see, facts about pyrophiles. Their seeds typically contain tough shells. Some pyrophiles only bloom when surrounded by smoke aromas from their natural habitat. I always found that interesting when there's like a forest fire and then after a while things grow back even better. Alright. I think that's all it shows. That is pretty cool. It's like the destruction of nature brings more life. Like the old famous Jeff uh, Goldblum. Life always finds a way. Shake a locked door. Let's try the kitchen. Nope. And the back terrace. Nope. Okay. I don't think we found any, uh, any clues for that other one. So it did say that the other seed was in the rose garden. Okay, so the rose garden. Let's go and see if we can find that. We got something over there that we haven't checked, but we also have this big area. So let's go check over here. See if we can find what we're looking for. Oh, another, got another chair. Sitting it. Yeah, that's a nice view right there. Oh, wow, look at that. That's cool. We got like a vase. It's a very pretty place. More chairs to sit in. And sit in. If there's a chair, I'm taking a break. It's a pretty cool fountain. This goes all the way down. Okay. Take a little, little fountain bath. Take a shower. Let's see if this gate opens over here. Wait, do we get a map? It did show maps, didn't it? In the beginning? Index. Wow, it goes all the way back. Maps. 
Okay. We're in the main area. So we came from the conservatory, which was one. We got the driveway at two. Three is the entrance garden. Four, we're in the long hedgerow right now. Five is the orchard. Um, Rose garden is seven. We got to get around somehow or in the back. Okay. Let's see if we can go to number five real quick. I think we searched the hedge already. We got to go over here. I swear those things look like purple eggs. Okay, we got the orchard. Is it locked? Yes, it is. Okay. We're at an impasse. We must find... a key. Oh, we did have uh, stairs here we didn't go in. And we also got this. Okay. Whoa. A little laboratory? Ah, chemical disposal. Let's put that back. Sulfur, potassium, magnesium, phosphor, sodium, titanium, zinc, and barium. Can't see myself in the mirror. The art of painting in oil and fresco. Take a seat. Yeah, just, just take a seat. Go over here. Ooh, look at that. This place is awesome. I actually like the wallpaper. Uh, let's see. The Rose Garden, I think, is out there. Oh, another seat. Yeah. Let's see what this says. Folklore book. Botanical folk... Tales. Some ancient Celtic tribes practiced a coming-of-age ritual. This meant that when someone was considered old enough, it was time to prove themselves worthy of staying in the tribe. One of these rituals involved picking a flower in the woods. Though not just any flower, of course, the gatherer had to find a Bulgaria, because these flowers are known to only bloom during thunderstorms. Keeping a cool head while lightning flashes were striking left and right of, of you was considered to be the ultimate proof of courage. Okay, so that's that flower. That's the flower we were looking at, right? Index. And yeah, Fulgaria. Folklore book. I think that's one of them. Go keep looking around. Still haven't gone upstairs too. Oh, look at that. You know, the thing that always gets me when people have big manors or mansions like this, they never have good, like, game rooms or anything like that. It's either, like, arc- not, like, not arcade, but, like, maybe, like, pool tables and all that kind of stuff. It's like people have such big houses, but no time to really spend in them. Arabella Elizabeth. That's it. Uh, her and her sister. I feel like if I'm gonna have a house like this, I'm just gonna stay in the place forever. Play harpsichord. Noise. Piano woman. Play the harpsichord. Oh, we got a key. Back terrace. Okay. It's one door we can open. What's that? Flash powder. Oh, we're gonna need that. It's empty. We might have to make it. Oh, look at that. There it is. Highly combustible. Bottle contains 75 grams of flash powder. Chemical composition, potassium and magnesium, a two to one ratio. So we want two potassium, one magnesium. Make flash powder. Okay. Let's see what this says. Lady Arabella, these past weeks I've been seeing lots of bright flashes coming from the back room of your house. It scares my cows immensely, as they think a storm must be coming. My milk production has taken a hit because of this. And if you enjoy fresh milk in your morning cup of tea, I would advise you to keep the flash to a minimum. Farmer Charles. Okay, so we gotta make flash powder in order to get that plant to grow. Oh. I see. So we'll make the flash powder, put it here, get the camera ready, and we'll put the plant here, and then flash. Look at that. Very cool. 
Okay. Figuring it out. Let's sit in the chair. It's a cozy place. Let's try this one out. I feel like I'm in one of those uh, furniture stores where you got to try out all the seats. See which one's the best. No, that one's bad. Let's try this one. Oh, yeah, that's not bad. That's a good one. Okay. Oh, got some glasses. Spectacles. Your new Lumen Photograph Flash Lamp. Okay. Fill the container with flash powder. Close the container. Press the button connected to the camera and the Lumen Flash Lamp and witness the bright flash. Okay, that's what we're going to do. Is that part of the clues, I wonder? Let's see. Flash powder bottle, probably. And letter... For, no, not letter from a farmer. Flash manual. Because clearly that plant needs to be flashed. By the light. So I have the seed. But we also got to make it here. So it was potassium and magnesium, if I remember right. Let's double check. Flash powder bottle. Can I read it? Nope. Okay. Um, let's try it out. One potassium, two potassium, magnesium. And... Is that it? What else would I would do with that? Let's do the dispose the chemicals. Okay, maybe I can put it over there to the camera. Let's see if it flashes. Boom. Take picture. Did it, did it work? <laughs> I don't know. Let's put that there real quick. Oh, there we go. Ooh, look at that. Oh, it works. Okay, let's go make some more. Before that happens. Oh, yeah, look at that. Perfect. That shouldn't get anything now. Did it put it back to black? It does. Okay. Let's go fill that up again. This game's cool. I am enjoying it so far. Alright. Two potassium. One magnesium. Let's go put it in there. And we'll save it until it's time to get that plant over here. Like that. Okay. And then let's go put this vial back. Or flask. And then we got to go over here to the potting. So we got the seed. We need some soil. Plant the fulgara. Get some water on it. There we go. And let's take it over to the camera. It's going to get that Instagram on it. I have to give it that selfie. There we go. Let's see if this is all we need. Boom. Oh, look at that. Awesome. Didn't even get all the clues. Nailed it. Grow the Fulgaria. The Fulgaria only grows during thunderstorms where the flashes of light provide the bright light the flower needs to bloom. Because of its dangerous growing conditions, not many people have witnessed its beauty. Until now. Okay. So I grew that one. Now we gotta get to the rose garden, but I also want to see if we can find those other clues. Apparently, I went through all of them already. Then again, the farmer one might be one. Letter from a farmer. And a flash powder bottle. Oh, we got two of the flash lamp manuals. Okay, so you can do two of them. Let's see if we can find something else. The art of painting. Maybe the... Oh, the picture, probably. Photographs. There we go. Got it. Making progress. Let's go upstairs real quick. See what we got up here. Oh, another chair. I told you, man. I'm sitting on every one of these things. 
Oh, look at that. We got a lock. Library hall. Okay, we gotta figure that out. Up oh, we're upstairs. Got a fish painting. Oh, and this is blocked off. We're gonna have to get rid of the tree somehow. Okay, let's go over here. We gotta find out how to... Or for the library hall, we're gonna need to find out what letters we need to open that. But, first we need to get to the rose garden. Which we can use the terrace, I think. I already looked at all this. The kitchen's locked. And we got the key for this. Alright. The music's nice, too. Oh yeah, look at all the plants. Locked from the other side, so we can't get through there. What a nice place. Wait a minute, is that the farmer that was complaining? That far away? I swear. That far away they're complaining about those flashes. Okay, so we got this plant area. We went out to the back terrace. Let's look at the map real quick. And map. So back terrace is number six. Number seven is the rose garden. That's where the seed is. It's right down there. And we're looking for... Go back to the index. We're on chapter two. We are looking for the ash bloom. And we need some clues for it as well. Such a nice place. Multi-million dollar house. Flowers, plants of Great Britain. and Pratt. Got another chair. Got some pillows. It's be a lot of work to keep this place up. You'd have to have an army of gardeners. You call them the Green Thumb Legion. Oh, they got the grass on here. There we go. Seed log. Arabella Green Seed Log, 1890. Summary of some seeds I've gathered this year and the location as I found them. Owl Parsley, Black Down Hills, Poppy, Cheddar George, Buttercups, Starch Marshes, Ash Bloom, Whitman's Wood. Okay, that's the one we're looking for. Uh, Wood... Ane I don't even know how to say that. Anemone? Anemone? Uh, Whole Foot Comb, Wild Thyme, Full Bone Wood, and Foxglove, Ford Abbey. Okay. And there's the seed. Keep zooming in. This might be a tough case to crack. Not if you're me. I'm the world's greatest botany detective. As you guys will see. Alright. Let's sit here again. Every chair. His butt is testing it. We got the formal gardens. Probably locked. There is. What about in here? Oh wow. Place just keeps going. Letter from Grace. My dear friend Arabella, a friend of mine visited the Americas and brought back a pair of fabulous gray squirrels. They are the latest trend in garden decoration. All of my neighbors have sent for them as well. It was a great investment. The two squirrels have now started a big family, and my garden is full of the darling little critters. One thing I did notice is that I haven't seen a red squirrel in my garden for some time now. How odd. You must visit soon and see the squirrels for yourself. Ever yours, Grace. And I know all about them squirrels in the old Americas. Squirrels are pretty cool. Alright, let's sit on this bench. There's no bench this butt has not tested. Oh wow, is there a waterfall down there? Sounds like there's a waterfall. I don't see it though. Okay. Let's... Oh, we got the kitchen. So I'd imagine that's going to be where some clues are. Let's see what this says. Kitchen notes. Uh, Hazel Patterson kitchen notes. Thursday. Jimmy broke another mortar. That boy really needs to learn how to grind spices without breaking down my kitchen. Lady Arabella may not be best pleased with me asking for a new one. The last mortar took years to be sorted. She's so scatterbrained, always off on her fancy research trip. Okay, shopping list. Flour, eggs, milk, leeks, potatoes, carrots. Okay, that's it. That'd be a nice place to cut some vegetables. 
uh, why exactly would you have to go and get all those vegetables if you got a whole place like a garden like this? They just do flowers here, I guess. They don't grow anything else. Man, you can at least grow your own potatoes. Okay, let's go to the kitchen. I already read that. This says it's locked from the other side, so we have to find a way around. Painting room. Kitchen's at the end here. Oh, come on. I keep hitting right trigger. Zoom. Oh, wow. This place just keeps getting better and better. This must be the pantry. This is a big pantry. You can put everything in here. Why in God's name would you even leave a house like this? I just live in it forever. Mysterious symbol. Okay. That's a sheep with a flag. Definitely a sheep flag. Okay. I guess you could just look at it. And what do we got here? We got weights. What are we trying to wait against? There's nothing in there yet. We got to figure that out. Got a grinder. Oh, what do we got here? Religious blessing. Okay, let's bless this kitchen. Gifted by Nicholas Owen. Uh, blessed is this kitchen. By grace and holy light, may all those who enter find comfort and respite. Blessed is each room with laughter and with cheer. May the love shared here be held forever dear. To those who serve the Lord, who seek their sanctuary, remember the year of construction, for this, friends, is the key. Oh, wow. That was beautiful. Um, yeah, okay. Let's see what this is. Hazel's Priceless Recipes. Uh, for the home, farm, workshop, and every department of human endeavor. Roasted chestnuts. Uh, this is a simple recipe, perfect to warm those cold winter nights. You can use any chestnuts. They are easily foraged. The main difficulty with chestnuts is that they have a tough shell, but like many nuts and seeds, it's easy to crack them open with the help of fire. Simply place the nuts in a pan above the fire and wait till you hear a pop. This means that your chestnuts are nicely roasted and ready to eat. Sounds like popcorn. We're having chest popcorn. Okay. Oh, there's a fire over there. What else we got? Oh, chair. Sitting in the chair. Oh, yeah. Testing that bad boy out. We got kindling. And old letter. University College, London, 1853. Dear lady, we received your letter applying to study botany at our College of Natural Sciences, along with your enclosed drawings. We do not, at present, and have never admitted women to study at the college. Botany is a serious science and conducted in laboratories and lecture halls. By all means, continue to pursue your hobby, tending to your garden and collecting flowers in the appropriate domestic space where it may be appreciated. Positions at the college are reserved for serious scholars whose studies will go on to be well utilized in a career in botanical experimentation. Therefore, with all politeness, we do not offer these valuable positions to amateurs that should otherwise be taken up by genuine academics. Signed, Professor John Alteringman. I probably said that wrong. Yeah. No ladies in the college. That sucks. Looks like she really got into it, though. They got- they probably messed up. Oh, there's the broken mortar. Broken mortar. What's this one? Dartmoor Lecture. Society of Historians. Southwest Group. Monthly lecture open to all society members. The history of Dartmoor, given by our, residence, our resident natural history professor. The professor will present how the moor was once covered in a majestic forest and woods, how early settlers came to the area and cleared most of the trees for pastures, using fire as their method of choice. It promises to be a fascinating story of how the moorland we know and love today came into existence. And... okay. So, I'm not noticing anything that's clues for that yet. I did hear about the chestnut thing, but I don't see any chestnuts. Maybe the seed needs to be roasted on that or something. That would be interesting. Or maybe we gotta... Wait a minute. Ash bloom. Okay. Maybe we gotta take the plant and put it on here. Cook it. That'd be interesting. 
What's this one? To someone special, a romantic card. Oh. Okay, dearest Hazel, I picked you some roses from the garden to cheer you up. When you're done with your work in the kitchen, would you like to meet me for a cup of tea in the formal garden? The pond is lovely this time of year. Warm regards, Mr. Bennett. Ooh. Okay. The ancient oak stands tall in Wistman's woods. Uh, covered in moss, they withstood the test of time. Though none can tell the sorrows that did befell. Those trees in Wistman wood. Trying to figure out. Ooh, we got a porcelain duck. That one's cool. What else we got? Okay, it's not locked, so we, we got places to go. Oh, look at all the logs. We got oak, maple, cherry logs, and birch logs. That's cool. Cherry looks cool. Now, what are we going to use for that? Got some carrots. Oh, a smokery. Home smoking and curing. Chapter 4. Uh, let's see. Using the home smokery. The type of wood to use in your smokery is of great importance. Though which one to pick depends entirely on your personal taste and preferences. Burning wood from different types of trees produce different smoke aromas. This is due to different chemical compositions in each type of smoke. and has a great impact on the flavor of your smoked food. So in summary, choose your wood logs with care. Indeed. That does make the difference. Let's see what we got in the smokery. Okay. Looking like a sauna in here. All those sausages. Smoked food. Man. This person's living the life. Okay. Can I, okay, I can, think I can put some wood in there. Let's see. Let's go with the cherry. Inspect the cherry log. Go into the smokery, put some cherry in here. Ooh. The aroma. Shut the door. Let's get the full experience. Is it shut? Shut the door. It pops up. There it goes. Yeah, we're getting the full experience of the cherry. Okay, I'm not exactly sure what we're supposed to be doing there. Nothing seems to be telling me what I need to do, unless I'm just totally missing it. Which again... Let's see. Let's see if we can find anything special here. Roses from the Great Garden to cheer you up. Formal garden. Teacup. No. Okay. Warm regards. Look around some more. We did have the weights in here, for whatever reason. And we got that symbol. Put the 9 ounce weight on there. Boom. Can we put anything in there? No. Okay. What's that? That's weird. Does it just keep going like that? Interesting. And we didn't see any, uh... Um, I wasn't looking really, but any, like, words that were, like, three letters? Let's look around some more. And... We don't got no keys for anything else, do we? Might be a tough case to crack. Well, this has a... A tough, uh, shell, I think. Maybe I need a roast. That's closed from the inside. Okay, we're in a bit of an impasse here. Let's go outside to the rose garden real quick. I think I gotta go to the back terrace again. And then let's go and get that plant going. See what we can do with it. There it is. Okay, we're gonna put the soil in, plant the ash plume, get that water. 
Nope. Okay. Good. So we gotta crack it open. So one of those things is a clue. Smoking book? Nope. Cooking book. I'd imagine that's one of them. So I think we're supposed to go and cook this thing. So we can crack this, uh, the shell open. Ooh, look at it. Look at that. Achievement. Crack. Germinate the ash plume seed. Okay. Now we gotta go water it, I'm pretty sure. And maybe we're supposed to put it in the smoker. Okay, it doesn't want to be watered yet. What else do we got here? Compost bin, we don't want to do that. So we germinated the seed. Hmm. Let's go to the smoker, see what we can do with that. All the way over to the smokery. Is there a place I can put this inside the smokery? Ooh, yep, right here. Okay. I'm gonna use that cherry again. As you, the, uh, the wood you use is your preference. Why is this always hard to close? Smoke it. Shut the door. Shut the door. Anything? Come on, Ash Bloom. Yeah, I think I smoked it. Doesn't seem to be doing anything. Maybe water right now? Okay, let's see if we can water the thing. So, there must be clues hidden in all the stuff that I went through and I just didn't notice it. Gotta be. Now, some water maybe? Nope. Okay, we're gonna have to go through stuff again. I'm gonna put this back in the smokery. Maybe there's not enough smoke. Go back in here. Smoke the crap out of it. That back up there. Grab some more cherry. I'll try some other woods if nothing works. Is that one? Nope, you can only do one at a time. Okay. Let's read some more stuff. I'll leave the plant in there. Gotta uh, take a deeper look at this. Type of wood in your smokery, good importance. Depends entirely on your personal taste. Burning wood in different types of these produce different smoke aromas. Composition of smoke, great. Choose your wood logs with care. Okay. Let's say that the smoke book is part of the clues here. And... Seed log. I'm just going to start throwing them in here. Pyrophile. Did that do it? I'm not sure how that worked. I don't know if I just messed that up or not. I guess that was all the clues. Okay, let's try different pieces of wood then. Birch wood. You like the birch wood, Ash Bloom? Is that your thing? Yeah, that seems to be gone. All right, we're gonna do the maple. I'm gonna go grab that oak real quick. says it's my preference though so I don't know if it makes a difference and that one's gone now you oak it up oh that oh 
Yo did it. Yeah. We did it. Those clues said something, but I don't know where it said any of that. I missed it, clearly. The ash plume is a pyrophile. Evolved to survive harsh forest fires, its seeds crack open with extreme heat, and afterwards the oak smoke from its habitat indicates it's safe to bloom. Okay, I probably did read all that and just missed it. But... What was that? Oh, we got a delivery at the gatehouse. Okay, I fumbled my way through it. Alright. I gotta be. I take a closer look at the, the stuff I'm reading, because clearly I missed it. Well, let's get to that gatehouse. All the way over here. And this place is awesome. Oh, we got a delivery, right? Oh, we got the orchard key. Thank you for the delivery, whoever you were. So I think the orchard's on the left over here. And that should take us to chapter three. Making a get. Yep. Oh, it looks... No, that wasn't open, was it? Yeah, it was. We opened it. There we go. Into the orchard. Look at that. Peculiar petals. Two new plants added. Okay, let's see what we got. Pixie Tears. This flower is closely associated with orchards. I wonder why. And Wolf Glove. The small flower has long tubular petals. How interesting. Okay, we got... Um, the seed packet is in the orangery. And this one is in the orchard. This is a really cool game. It's a puzzle game for sure, but I really like the whole... Uh, like the, um, not genre, but the theme of it all. It's nice and relaxing. Okay, let's read these and really take a look at it. Dear niece, I have gathered a selection of my cherished toys and books, among them my beloved piggy. I highly re recommend the nursery rhymes. They are charming as well as educational, though I'll take no offense should they play. They put your little one straight to sleep. With all my affections, Auntie Arabella. Okay, so maybe the plant needs some kind of music. Let's see what this says. A treasury of nursery rhymes, the wolf glove. High on the mountaintop, so steep, grows a flower that's hard to keep. Its petals delicate and bright, whistling in the wind with all their might. The mountaineers who climb up high listen for the whistle as they try to find their way and miss the snow and reach the summit, cheeks aglow. With every step, they hear it loud, the wolf gloves howl, clear and proud, guiding them through the pass unknown to reach the summit and call it home. Okay, so it's in the mountains, so it must be cold, and maybe the sound of the wind, which makes noise, is going to be the thing that makes it grow. Pixie tears, wolf glove. So let's go with that nursery rhyme. So the wolf glove, I, I'm guessing that it's going to have to take some kind of noise. Or wind, or some cold. Okay, we got all that. We need to find the seed still. What's this one? Specimen. Red Campion. Interesting. Fox glove. What we got in here? Can we put them in there? Bunch of specimens. Microscope slide. Primrose. Spring dance shrub. Hyacinth. Pixie tears. Ah. Cradle fern. Bluebell. Ah, I remember that in Viva Pinata. One of my favorite games. Got them bluebells. Tincture of iodine. Perfect for preparing microscope slides. Okay. Iodine. Um, the pixie tears. I would imagine that that one... Let's see, the microscope slides are probably for that. Okay, let's read this. Um, chloroplasts. In the world of plants, the sun is the ultimate source of energy. Chloroplast, or... I'm just going to go with that. Uh, small organelles inside the cells of a plant 
are responsible for capturing the light from the sun and converting it into sugar through photosynthesis. However, not all plants have chloroplasts. Um, some plants rely on organic matter for their energy and do not photosynthesize. They have lost their chloroplasts over time and have instead adapted to obtain energy by absorbing sugars through their roots. It is therefore recommended to add a certain amount of sugar to the soil when cultivating these particular plants. Okay. So it looks like the pixie one is going to need some sugar. We need sugar for the pixie one. What's this? Orchard mosaic. I thought it was going to be one of those slide puzzles. The history of England. Priest holes. An illustrated history of England for scholars, advanced classes, and the discerning reader by A. and E. Strickland. Priest holes. Back in the Middle Ages during the reign of Queen Elizabeth, all Catholics were prosecuted or persecuted by law. Therefore, some households built secret rooms in case they needed to hide a priest that was visiting for their family home. Many of the, these so-called priest holes were designed and built by Nicholas Owen. Only the owner of the house and Nicholas himself knew about the location. Because of this, it is thought that there may be many undiscovered priest holes throughout England to this day. So maybe there's a secret priest hole around here. Let's see what this one says. Letter for Historian. Lady Arabella, thank you for inviting me to Botany Manor last Monday. As a historian, I found it wonderful to see a medieval manor, especially one as beautiful as yours. I apologize again for not being able to locate the priest hole in your house. Though I am convinced, it exists and we will find it one day. It won't be easy, they tend to be hidden well and sometimes require elaborate mechanics to be opened. And regards, Professor Pennyworth. Okay, so there definitely is a hidden place here. And it's a medieval manor. It definitely is pretty, though. I will agree with that. Let's see what we got over here. Uh, advice letter. Dearest Arabella, how are you getting on in your garden? I hope it's not getting to be too much for you on your own these days. Our mutual friend mentioned you have been struggling to germinate the ash bloom. I may have some advice for you. Have you tried making sure that is fresh compost in the pot? Stubborn seeds often need that to grow. I'll visit you sometime, and perhaps I can find a way to crack the seed for you. I can show you the book I've been working on at the same time. You're sincerely, sincerely, Charles Tucker esque. Mo well, Trucker, I already figured that out. That was useless. Why is it over here? Collect seeds. We got the pixie tears. This is the seed that needs sugar. And what do we got here? Okay, we got notes on soil additives. Sometimes I need to add extra nutrition to the soil. I have found the following amounts to work best with my different pots. That's going to be important. So whichever pot we're using, we need to weigh out on that scale the additive, which I would think is sugar. So what pot are we going to use? I'm guessing we're using this pot. Okay, let's grab the soil. Let's grab that pixie tier plant a little water okay or was i supposed to do that first let me use <laughs> uh oh was i supposed to water it right away maybe i was supposed to do the additive first okay well we got extra seeds so let's uh where's the compost thing there it is goodbye plant Let's just add that soil to it. Let's see if we can bring that soil into the house. And I'll come back and... Well, we don't need to come back. Let's just look at the number real quick for this kind of pot. I'm guessing it's 97 grams. 97 grams. Let's remember that. So let's go to the kitchen and see if we can find some sugar. Wait a minute. Can we go this way? Remember there was an opening in like the greenhouse thing? Wonder if there is a way to get into it from this direction. I'll come back to that seat. Oh, I'll go and do all this stuff. There's the other one. Yep, there's the opening here. Got it. Let's go to the kitchen. 97. There's sugar in here. That's the other thing we gotta find. 
Yeah, we need to find some sugar. Okay, I guess we don't need this. Let's go back. And the sugar's not even in the kitchen. Where would you put it? If I was sugar, where would I be? I think I'd be in the kitchen. I'm gonna put this thing back on the table, and I'm gonna go look around somewhere. I think I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Let's go try this nifty chair out. Look at that, it's got a nice cushion on it. Yeah, that's nice. Alright. Lady Arabella, I have received your request for repairs to the roof of your garden tower. Alas, I must confess that I am not the man to undertake this task. It may have escaped you your notice that the tower in your orchard is known to locals as the Turbulent Tower. It is uh, believed that a poltergeist dwells within its walls. Legend says the spirit is evil and brings ferocious winds upon anyone who dares to enter the tower. Ooh, we're going to need that. I don't want to provoke the wrath of the ghost, and I advise you to refrain from meddling with the tower. Willie the Builder. Someone's superstitious. Okay, didn't one of those plants need it? Not the pixie one. The, the wolf glove. Letter from the Builder. And then also the pot notes we're going to need for the pixie tears. Okay. So wolf glove, we're going to need to take it to the tower. See if the poltergeist can blow on it. Get that wind going. Okay. Let's go this way. Oh, that must be the tower right there. Interesting. Ooh. It looks like that's uh, a lift. Okay. What's this? In an ammo. Oh, let's see. How do you say that? Anmo meter. Broken anmo meter. Probably messing that up too. And move up. Oh wow. This whole thing goes up. Level one. Interesting. Okay. And each level is probably a different amount of wind. Nice. Okay, let's go back down. That is really cool. Got a whole elevator in here. A whole elevator in a haunted tower. Okay. Got some ghosts in there, poltergeist and everything. Here we go. Power wind research. Okay, we got wind speeds of 35 on the third floor. Somehow my um, anometer anometer broke. I hope there isn't a poltergeist in the tower after all. Okay, so we don't... We can tell how much uh, the speed is, but we don't know what we need. But that's going to be for the wolf glove. Wind research. Mountaineer's Guide to Alpine Exploration. Second edition issued by Alpine Club. Oh, here we go. Be sure to wear the correct gear when climbing. The wind in the Alps can be fierce and changeable. It is advised to wear thick, warm clothing and sturdy boots with a good grip. Wind speed and pressure in the Alps by location. Mount Blanc, Matterhorn. Okay. So we got all those different speeds. And if I remember right, there was something... I, I, there was like a uh, thing in the house that said where the seeds came from. And that would give us the information. Oh, and there's a seed down there. Oh, and there's the secret room. Ah. How do we open it? Let's see what we got here. Painting room. Nice. Lady Arabella, as you can see, the staircase of the orangery collapsed in your absence. I have already written to the builder in the hope he wants to sort it out, though, as you know, he can be difficult to pin down. I do apologize if this is getting in the way of your research. I don't suppose you can find another way into the bottom level. Oh, I found another way. I just got to figure out how to open it. What's this say? Dearest Arabella, um, we made it to the Alps. We are so sad that you couldn't join us this time, but we understand you are busy creating your herbarium. Yesterday we were lost on a hike until we suddenly heard a strange whistling tune. We followed the sound and soon enough we discovered it was coming from a tiny flower. If only you had been there to tell us what kind of flower it was. Your loving friend's Natty. Okay. Well, you see, that was a wolf glove flower. Okay.
Okay, because I'm kind of a professional now. Alpine weather. Letter about the Alps. And let's see. Arabella Green Botany Manor. Can I open it? Natty Golding. Envelope with the stamp. Oh, that must have been the that came out of it. Okay. So the way to get to the bottom, we gotta go to that other thing. But let's see if we can find that note. I think it was over here. That told where we got the stuff. Oh yeah, here we go. Box glove. Wow, let's see. It doesn't say it. Oh wait. No, it just says fox glove. And this is supposed to be wolf glove. Interesting. We gotta figure out where it is. And this letter over here was talking about the Alps, but did it say... Anywhere else? It was made in the Alps. Is that... I thought, it, like, there was different places there. Let's see. Wind speed. Alps exploration. And... So we need the wind speed. Somehow... Okay. That's not doing it. Where's the paper we're looking for? Not in here. I wish you could look at it through your, like, little document thing. It's not that either. Where did I find that paper? Is it this one? That's the history of England. That's not it. Man, I don't know where that was. I got lost again. Look around some more. Okay, not there. Go back up here. Oh, it's here. Okay. Um, Mount Grand. Let's see. It doesn't say anything about like. In the Alps by location. That's what I'm saying. I was. It says the Alps, but did it say where in the Alps? I see here. Didn't that check? Let's look at that note one more time. Oh. And from Natty Golding. Yeah, it doesn't say. It just says to. It doesn't say from where. We made it to the Alps. Suddenly strange whistling sound. I'm not seeing nothing. Let's go to the art room. We also got to find a way into that place downstairs. Painting room. The manor. Let's look at the kitchen. And then the pantry. Cool. All the paintings. Meadow Orchards. Uh, research Team 1862. Ann Jones, Robert Brown, Arabella Green, Professor John Morton. See. Society for Botanical Research, August 1861. Dear Miss Green, your research proposal on the structure of coastal plants was of quaint interest. We have no plans to fund a small project like this, but perhaps if you are set on botanical field work, you might assist Professor Montag in, or Montagu in his work on British meadow orchards. Uh, I am sure your natural aptitude for domestic duties would be much appreciated. Might I also recommend John Lindley's Ladies Botany, on elementary an elementary book for unscientific readers, and one I have heard is a suitable amusement for ladies such as yourself, being about a mother who wishes to teach her children about plants. Respectfully, uh, there's a bunch of sassiness in this, isn't there? These ladies don't know how to do the botany. Okay. Flower painting and watercolor. Lady Arabella. Um, Arabella, I was wondering if I could join Mr. Bennett into town later this afternoon to place an order for a new kitchen scale. 
The one we have is rather ancient, and I'm afraid it's not suitable for measuring flour to make my delicious scones. If you could let me know your decision before the afternoon, you'd be, uh, that'd be lovely. In your service, Miss Patterson. Okay, so the way to open that, we're going to have to use that scale. It's a certain amount of weight. I would imagine maybe it's the 97. Symbology. A study wherein the discerning reader will find a history of the use of religious and folkloric symbols throughout the art of the world. Uh, published by Edwards and Co-Publishing and Supply Company, Museum Street, London. Religious symbols. Biskillian. Uh, Ajut. I'm not going to be able to say all that. Star and Crescent. Let's see. Okay, there's just a, a bunch of different uh, religions for the symbols. I'm sure I'm going to have to use that at some point. A painting that was never finished. What else we got in here? My dearest Arabella and Garden Fair. Garden's Fair, your grace the scene, a flower is rare. Your presence beams with radiant light, a lily's charm so pure and white. Your hands, like petals, soft and fine, in tender touch a love divine, and in your eyes a brilliance glows as daisies fair in spring repose. Oh, how I long to have you near, to cherish you, my heart sincere. Like roses freshly cut, you'd be the trophy of my home with glee. Huh. Someone likes her. Where, oh where, do I go now? I think I gotta go do the scale. I remember that other thing said 97 grams, so maybe we gotta equal up to 97. And it did have a symbol on the pot. Maybe it was the same symbol. I don't know. Let's see. What adds up to 97 here? Well, that definitely doesn't add up to 97. Interesting. What kind of pot we got here? Okay, that's that symbol again. Now, what's the number? Hmm. And again, where do we get the sugar? We got the kindling here. See, no sugar around here anyway. Okay. Let's go look at the the picture again with the weights. And maybe I gotta do 97, like add it up a different way. Maybe because it's at four spots, maybe the first two have to eat equal like nine and the second has to be seven. It's over here. I ran by it. Got distracted, okay. Here we go. So that's the pot. 97. Okay, I totally missed an area over here. Let's go see what's over here. There's a door back here. Look at all this. Maybe this is why nothing was going in, like uh, the notes were in order. Take a seat. Got to test it out. And we got the Heritage Orchard, a preservation of endangered apple varieties. Go see what's going on over here. Oh, we got apples. Look at that. That doesn't look like a good apple. Cider making and apple blending. Sugar tannins and acid values given per single apple. Ooh, sugar. Here we go. Knobby russet. Oh. Okay. We gotta look and see what kind of acids and stuff. Look at all these different apples. It's got to equal up to like probably 97 grams. Cider apples. Okay, I would imagine that this is part of the clues for the pixie one. Apple blending. And... Cider apples. Okay, so we got to equal this up to 97. 97. 
So 40. Hmm. How many can we put in there? As many as we want, probably. Okay, so if we do the Nobby Russet, that's 40 grams. We do the Cat's Head, that's 30, so that's 70. And then Merlin's Mist, that's 80, 97. So Nobby Russet, Cat's Head, and Merlin Mist. Let's see what that is. Nobby Russet, that is that. This one. Set this over here. Nobby Russet. We need the Cat's Head. Cat's Head, that's the green one. That's got the weird bottom. There's more over here. That one. So that's the cat's head. And then Merlin's Mist. That's a cool looking one. That's right, I think. Merlin's Mist, yep. So 40, 30, that's 70, 80, 97. Let's go make some cider. We gotta put all of them in there? I think we put them all at once. Hopefully. Ooh, side it up. Oh no. They respond, I hope. Okay, they re <laughs> Okay. I see what I gotta do. I gotta get the plant there. Okay, let's put them all here. Like that. There we go. That's what we needed. Let's go grab the plant. So we need the dirt, which is already there. Pixie twos. Let's water it up. And let's go put that sugar in it. Come on, Pixie Tears, we're gonna get it. Mash it up. Oh, look at that. Nice. Oh, that's cool. And the flower, oh, look at that, the butterfly started showing up. Achievement unlocked. Pixie Tears. Grow the Pixie Tears. The Pixie Tears no longer contains chloroplasts, which are organelli or organelles responsible for photosynthesis. Instead, the Pixie Tears obtains sugar through their roots, which is commonly uh, finds in the apples from orchards. That's really cool. Okay. Didn't need to find sugar because we got it out of the apples. And look at all the butterflies started showing up again. Making it all nice and pretty. Okay, we got all the butterflies in. Let's keep going. Let's grab this plant. I found a plant room where you're supposed to put all these plants. So I'm going to go and show you that now. Also, um, I was playing this earlier and I went to go load my save game and the whole thing was lost. So I had to speed run back to this part again. So if any of you are on the Xbox Series X playing this game, there's a save issue from the time that I recorded this. Okay, and here is the plant room. Apparently there's an achievement for filling this whole room up with plants. So we're going to work on that. All right, and then the plant we're working on now is the wolf glove. And we have to get down in that one area. But I remember there was a letter that we could probably use um, about the secret entrance. I want to know if there's a year on that or not. Because there's four numbers on those scales. The weight. I wonder if it's a year that we have to put in. Let's see. Is this the one? No, that's Willie the Builder. I think it's this one. I don't see any year on that. What about this one? Priest tool holes. Queen Elizabeth, all Catholics were prosecuted by law. Um, Nicholas Owens. 
Yeah, I don't see any year on that. There's got to be any, a year when that was made or something. So let's look around for more details. Wolf glove. I don't see no year there. It is like 1890. And where was this one? And then I thought I saw a year before too when she was trying to get into like the college. I think it was like 1853 or something. Alpine exploration. And we still don't know what mountain of the Alps that plant is from. But we got to get in there to figure that out. What's this one? Nope. Don't see nothing there. Let's see. The house is built in 1593. Let's try that. It was constructed in 1593. So 1593. There's a one. Five. Nine. Three. Yeah. Nice. It helps to be a little bit clever. History sleuth. Find the secret priest hideout. Look at this. This is awesome. So it looks like I'm gonna have to finish this whole game in one go because the save's not working. Oh, wow. And this is where the priest would hide out. Not bad. Also, these ducks. Um, there's an achievement for getting all those ducks and in inspecting them. So let's keep an eye out for that as well. Letter from the priest. My lord, Grain. Grain? Grain? Uh, thou hast ventured might mightily in granting me refuge within these walls, and for such favor I remain internally indebted to thee. The cunning of little John and his establishment of this sanctuary both inspire awe. A saint he is to our brethren and sisters who have sought refuge from the harsh rule of Queen Elizabeth and King James. Pray extended my gratitude unto thy cook for the sustenance provided. A welcome to respite from Brother Michael's oft-repeated fare of leeks and potatoes. With the most earnest of thanks, I entreat that this missive shall not mark our final communion and that our faith may endure unbroken. Yours with devotion, our plout. Some interesting writing he has. Alright. Oh yeah, we're in now. There's the seed. We found it. The small flower has long tubular petals. Let's see what we can do with this. Lady Mountaineer Club. First out in 1858. Okay. And then we got... What's in here? Oh wow. Souvenir coin. Souvenir de Mon Ascension. So they went to the Paris uh, Eiffel Tower. The Matterhorn, 1865. That might be it. Weisshorn, Switzerland. Grand Pardisio, Italia, 1885. Okay. So it does matter. We got to figure out the date. All correspondence. Let's see. To the above address, the Society for Botanical Science meets every second and fourth Wednesday from six o'clock at the assembly room. Rooms in Stroud. A prospective applicant must be supported by three existing fellows of the society, along with evidence of or research showing his dedication to the advancement of the science of botany. Widows of existing fellows receive honorary membership to attend an annual social events. This month's lecture is on the importance of laboratory investigation. Annual book sale. Publishers and collectors are invited to the annual book and periodic sale to be held at. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, I got ripped. I would imagine if she had a, a guy that she was with that she married and then she was a widow to him, she would be able to, and that was into botany, she'd be able to get access to it. I wonder if that happened. Oh, we got more coins. Ben Nevis, Fort William, Scotland. 
And then this one is Mount uh, Ventos. Mount Blanc. Iger Gwindwald. And Crystal Palace for the Great Exhibition in London, 1851. So it looks like the ones with years on it. Well, maybe they got years on the back. Okay. Uh, field trip journal. Here we go. 30th of July, 1862. Today marks the beginning of an intriguing adventure as I joined Professor John Montagu. Uh, Montaga. I don't know how to say that. His wife, Anne and uh, fellow botanist Robert Brown on our field trip to study British meadow orchids. Uh, everyone's enthusiasm for the subject is infectious. The 3rd of August, 1862, Professor Montagu uh, gathered all of us to examine a southern marsh orchid, though upon arrival I noticed it had much more hooded appearance and could be new species entirely. When I pointed this out, Professor Montagu laughed and explained that he was simply testing us. Interest. Oh, repair the stairs. <laughs> that was a simple repair. Fixer upper. Okay, now we can get up and down here. We gotta find the year. Uh, let's see. Which other one do we have? Coin collection. So, letter from builder. Nursery rhyme, wind research, alpine. Let's look at the envelope. It has a stamp on it, and that's when they were up in the mountains, right? But there's no year on this. What about here? They said they were in the Alps and said they couldn't join it because they found a new plant. So that's not it. Not that. And... The Mountaineer's Guide to Alpine Exploration. So if we were at the Matterhorn, it'd be 20 FS. But I'm not sure where we were. And that would be for or the first floor. Okay, and I need to get that plant now that I have the seed. And this is the builder. What else do we get? I guess like we can do the guessing game again if we wanted to. Yeah, okay. But I, I'm gonna guess it's the Matterhorn. Let's try the first floor. Let's get this. The soil. The wolf glove. Maybe a little water. And let's go take it to the wind. Also, there's an achievement for going to the top of the tower. So we're going to do that as well. I wonder if the wrong wind will mess the plants up. If not, we can just really just go up to the top. Alright, move up. Open her up. Is that it? Doesn't seem like it. Going up. Is this what you want, Wolf Glove? Yep, not seeing it. Keep it going. Enough wind for you? This is a little stingy plant. Up to the top. How about that? Okay, going up. Ooh, that wind's getting rough. It's getting crazy. Mountaineer. Go to the top of the tower. None of these are working. Okay. Ooh, that is loud. Oh. It's not gonna be that simple. Let's get oh, going up again. It's not going to be that simple. I probably have to open multiple windows to make the sound that it needs. 
Well, that's no good. And then this thing is broken, so it doesn't even show. Wonder if we can get something to fix that. That wind got loud. Yeah, so we gotta know. Maybe there's a painting of some sort that tells me. I'm leaving the wolf glove in here. Gotta go search around some more. Okay, we're back down here where we found the seed originally. I'm gonna look at this coin collection. I think it has to do with something with this, um, this sheep thing. Wonder if any of these have it, because I see 1858 here, but I didn't find any coins with 1858 on it. Well, this one has a ram on it. Weisenhorn? Maybe that's the one. Because I don't see any other ones that have either a ram on it or 1858. That one kind of looks like it. Like a billy goat. Mount Ventox. And then... Okay. Let's try this one. The one with the ram. The Weisenhorn. If not, it'd be Mount Ventox, I think is what it was called. So, if we go to that one. The uh, Weisenhorn, Mount Weisenhorn. Okay, so 40 for the wind speed. And 40 is on the fourth floor. But this is kind of weird too, though. Because you have the first test was on the third floor, it was 35. The second test was on the, uh, or the, it was on the second floor with 50. But there's two on the four. And then there's one that was 45 FS and 40 FS. Then you said his, um, his an anometer broke, so maybe that's it. We gotta go to the fourth floor, probably. Let's see if that does the trick. Is that the puzzle solution? Move up to the fourth floor. Floor one. There's two. Three and one more. Let's see if this is the one. Is that it? Not doing it. And place it. That doesn't seem to be it. It did it. That's kind of weird, though. It had 40 and 45, so it must not be right. Um, that'd be interesting if we had to do it, like, halfway. Weird. Okay, I think I found what the issue was. When we look back at this, there's pictures here. And we weren't looking at the pictures, I was just looking at the text. And it says the test number 4, or no, number 5, has 40 FS. And it's on the fourth floor, and there's two tests. So there's test number five. And you see how the windows are different? It's the, the second window is closed. The first one is half open on the right. And then the two above it. So number three and four are open fully. And that's how I got 40 FS. Let's try that. I think that's what the problem was. Another clue that I didn't see. So let's go to the first floor. Then this right shutter needs to be open. Now let's go up. This one's closed. And the next two are fully open. And hopefully this is the answer. And one more up. Come on. Got it. Yes, finally. That one was more difficult. Look at that thing. Very cool. 
Alright, achievement unlocked. Wolf glove. Nice. The wolf glove grows in Mount Wisehorn, where the weather is just right. When the wind hits it, its tubular petals, a howling sound can be heard. Mountaineers are familiar with this flower and use it to navigate on foggy days. Okay, let's go down. Oh, we got a gatehouse delivery. Let's take this plant to the plant um, room, and then we'll go get that gatehouse delivery item. It should take us to the next area. All right, we're in the plant room. Let's see. Let's put it right here. All right, we got five plants in here. Let's go to the gatehouse. What kind of delivery did we get? Hey, where's the delivery at? Is this it? Um, dear sister, I'm so glad to hear you returned safely from your travels. While you were away, I changed the code for the library door lock. Each time I visit, visit is I know some of the grandmother's valuable items are kept there. The new three-letter code for the door is the three initials of my name. To make it easy for you to remember, I hope we can meet soon. I look forward to hearing all about your adventures, your loving sister. Okay. So, let's go look at the family tree. Okay, let's go check that out. The three initials for her name. Okay, we're at the family tree. And... We need to look for Elizabeth. Elizabeth and Green. Okay, so that's A um, E A G. Let's see if that's the right one. E A G. Where's that E? There it is, A, and then G. No? We didn't get it right. E A G. Okay, I think the problem with this family tree is that Elizabeth. Um, wherever she is. And Green. Green isn't her last name anymore. This is her maiden name. Who's she married to? Okay, I think I found it. Her last name is Hopgood Household. Because it says her loving sister Elizabeth from the Hopgood Household. So her last initial would be H now. E-J-E-A-H is what it should be. Let's see if that's correct. Got it. Okay. We're in. Library hall. What we got here? Modern methods of teaching. And... A thank you card. Thank you kindly for the flower books you sent for my daughters. To this day, they still show an interest in learning more about plants and paintings. I am keen that my daughters have access to a good education, so I hope you don't mind me putting it upon you that you might be able to teach them somehow. Your dedication and knowledge seems so rare and inaccessible elsewhere for young girls like mine. I hope you will consider my proposal. Sincerest regards, Olive Campbell. Okay, she was teaching her daughters. That's cool. She's the botanist commander. What's in here? This place is so big. Botanical allies. Ooh, look at that. Four new plants added. Ooh, it's getting crazy now. Let's see. Okay, we got... Alright, we got Nightfall. A vaguely... I vaguely recall my grandmother studying the Nightfall when I was young. Sapphire Gloom. Judging by the name, I don't believe this to be an edible mushroom. Ooh, a mushroom. Cradle Fern. The past years, these ferns have drastically declined on the banks, so I feel compelled to research any changes in their environment. And Brook Chalice. My friend wrote to me about the Brook Chalice, which made me want to research them. Okay, so that one's in the attic. This is the master bedroom study and grandma's vault. Um, so I imagine we can find one in the study real quick. What do we got here? The fox and the crow. One evening, a fox was in search of something to eat for dinner. He saw the crow sitting on a tree branch, holding a big piece of tasty cheese in her beak. So, the fox came up with a plan. He walked up to the crow and complimented her shiny black feathers. The crow was suspicious of the fox, 
and kept her beak tightly closed on the cheese. The fox kept on charming the crow, describing her as the most majestic of all birds with a big strong beak. Oh, what a song that beak must make. It must be the song of a queen. Please, beautiful crow, let me hear it. Flattered by the praise, the crow forgot all about her suspicion and also her dinner. So she opened her beak wide to utter her loudest caw and down fell the cheese straight into the fox's open mouth. Well, that's a smart fox. Oh, look at this. Ooh. Okay. We gotta figure out what symbols we gotta do with that. Looks like a, a pattern of five. Let's look around here. See if we can find more stuff. We got a book. Wonders of the Night Sky. A pretty cool window. Okay, let's go up top. We got a staircase to climb. What's this? The golden fish. One bright morning, a poor fisherman caught a shining golden fish. The fish cried, Please let me live. I'm not a fish, but a prince, enchanted by a wicked spell. So the fisherman let the fish go free. When the fisherman's wife learned of this, she demanded the fish grant a wish in return for its freedom, a cottage instead of a hovel where they lived. So the fishermen returned to the shore and the fish granted their wish. But the wife was greedy and demanded riches, a palace, and servants. All the while the ocean became darker and the shore was black with dirt. Finally the wife wished to be so powerful that she could grant wishes for herself. In return for this greedy request, the fish revoked all of the wishes it had granted. After that the ocean became blue again, the shore clean, and the fishermen never saw the golden fish ever again. Probably not be greedy. So that's another symbol. We saw a fox, a crow, and a fish. What's this? The New Year's Ball. Your company is respectfully solicited at a New Year's Ball to be given at Somerset Hall. Thursday 4th, January 1860. Supper is at 6 o'clock. Good music in attendance. E. Grimes proprietor. Scribbled on the back. Cousin, wash your hands and accompany me. You won't find a husband at the bottom of the garden. <laughs> You must find a man and stop with your plants. Okay, let's see what we got. Ooh, we got another symbol. The rabbit. So it's the hare. The hare and the tortoise. This is a uh, pretty common one. Let's go through this. At midday, a hare and a tortoise took a walk together. The hare moved quickly and then noticed the tortoise struggling to keep up. The hare laughed and challenged the tortoise to a race. The tortoise accepted. A course was decided and the race began. The hare immediately leapt out of sight, but then laid down to take a nap. Sure, the tortoise would never catch up. The tortoise plodded slowly on, making his way towards the finish line. When the hare awoke from his nap, he opened his eyes just in time to see the tortoise crawl slowly across the finish line. The proud hare had been so sure that he would win, and underestimated the tortoise. As the tortoise crossed the finish line, he exclaimed, slow and steady wins the race. Indeed. Never fail to underestimate a tortoise. The rising sun. Okay. I think the stories are important. I think they are going to tell like the order. So let's see what we got here. We got the hare. We got the crow. We got the sun, the fish, and the moon. Okay. So the crow. Let's see how we can figure this out. I think the wonders of the night sky. Is it order in the order I found them? So the first one was the crow. I don't think that's the case. The night sky. And then I'm pretty sure it was the fish. And then the air and then the sun. So the fish, air, sun. That's not it. Okay. 
We gotta figure this out. One evening. Okay, so we got evening and the crow. All right, and then what about the other story? On the bright morning. At midday. Interesting. The rising sun. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So this is what we gotta do. We gotta go day to night cycle. Let's see. So the rising sun in the morning, midday, evening, night. Yeah, we got it. Grandma's vault. Heck yeah. It's always satisfying when you uh, solve a puzzle. Let's see. Sunset painting, 1st of May, red, orange, yellow, pink. Sunset, May 22nd. Okay. I'm not exactly sure what these mean yet, but let's look around and see if we can find more information. Old newspaper. The London Record, a weekly journal of literature, science, and art. Number 159, volume 7. For the week ending 9th May 1829, price one penny. It only cost a penny back then? Cheap as heck. Lindley appointed chair of botany at University College London after an esteemed early career as assistant secretary to the Horticulture Society and admission and one of the youngest ever fellows of to the Linen or Linian Society, John Lindley plans to elevate the science of botany. He spoke thus in his inaugural lecture. It has been very much the fashion of late years in this country to undervalue the importance of this science and to consider it an amusement for ladies rather than an occupation for the serious thoughts of a man, or of men. Uh, Lindley also challenged the Linnean classification system and proposed many changes. Okay, so they basically looked at botany as something that just women enjoyed. It wasn't a serious study. I would say botany is a serious study. That's how we get a lot of our medicines and stuff from plants. Important to understand them. Nightfall. All right. Ooh, we got a key for the study. What's this one? Nightfall progress. May or uh, Mary Green research notes 1830 to 1831. I've been trying to encourage the nightfall bloom for a little while now. I'm determined to prove it's more than just a myth. So far, I have deduced that the flower opens at sunset, and only during a particular time of year. When exactly that occurs still remains a mystery to me. I shall plant a few more seedlings tomorrow and continue my research. Tasks for this month. Monitor nightfall seedling. Rose planting list. Collect field samples seed collection. Okay, so... Hmm. I would imagine a certain types of colors are what's going to help it uh, promote its growth. We got to figure out which ones. It's all sunset, it seems. Yeah. And they're all different months. April, October, July, May. Oh, there's two Mays. Okay. Well, we got a key. Let's head up to see if we can find the study. And I thought there was a door there. No doors. Yeah, I think we gotta go back. Downstairs. Here we go. Unlock the door. Ooh, this is cool. All the way to the ceiling. January 1890. Letter from Anne. My dear friend, I've been pondering these last weeks. What could be the best way to see your remarkable flora reach the wider world? Since it is so seldom, we are able to see our work published. Considering your uncle's reputation in the scientific field, have you considered asking him to publish your herbarium under his name? 
It may not give you the recognition you deserve personally, but it would be a way to reach your goal of adding to the scientific record on botany. Do consider it. I would hate for such an important research to stay hidden away. With the warmest regards, Anne. That sucks. All that work and not being recognized for it. Collected and researched by Professor J. Montague. Meadows, Orchards of Britain. Let's see what else we got around here. Ooh, looks all this. Another puzzle. Oh, are those eggs? Golden mallard egg. Yeah, those are eggs. Oh, we got a seed. We got the sapphire gloom. Nice. What else we got? We do have this over here. Tree diseases. Red tree pox. If a tree is infected with red tree pox, many small red spots will be visible on the bark. It can usually be cured by adding fertilizer to the soil of the tree. Hypoxylon. Hypoxylon causes black patches to form on the bark of the tree. It is usually a sign that the tree is lacking in hydration and won't stay alive for much longer. Root parasite. The root parasite forms purple rings on the bark and the roots... Uh, the parasite leaches the nitrogen that the tree re retrieves from the soil will eventually cause the tree to dry out and lose all of its leaves. There is currently no known cure. Bark rust. Bark rust is a disease that isn't very harmful to the tree. It is usually caused by excess hydration and too much sunlight. Man, trees get diseases too. That's pretty cool. And let's see. Mushroom food sources. Just like plants, fungi need food sources to grow strong and healthy. However, some fungi haven't always had access to nutrients through soil and have evolved to retrieve it in different ways. This means they have become carnivorous uh, because they only acquire nutrients they need by consuming living organisms such as flies, bugs, and plants. Some mushrooms even get their nutrients from feeding on another type of fungus or parasite. Mushrooms growing on a tree is usually a sign that they are consuming the tree, so you should remove them immediately. Not always the case. I want, yeah, if that's true, I didn't know that. Arabella, I have some more books for the department that may be of interest for your research. One I recall was a favorite of your father's. If you have any trouble when you visit the college, tell the secretary you are collecting materials for your uncle. So long as they are returned before the summer ends, the professors won't notice. Best of luck in your research, Uncle Theodore. Okay, so the mushrooms eat the trees. Or they eat plants. Not plants, but uh, bugs and stuff. Which, I see bugs in here. On the paintings. Oh. A tree down here. Can we get the mushroom to go and uh, eat that tree? Yeah. Nice. Okay. Let's get that mushroom going. Or right, what were the clues? Sapphire. Mushroom book. And probably tree diseases. Yeah. Okay, was there a plant thing in here? I didn't see one. We can just go downstairs and do it. There's one right out in the front. So let's plant the mushroom. And we should be able to get that seed to be uh, grown and eat it. Let's go like this. Potting soil. And sapphire gloom. Water that bad boy. Yeah, and uh, eat the tree, mushroom. Look at that. Oh. That is awesome. Oh, it helped the tree grow. That was really cool. And we grew the sapphire gloom. The sapphire gloom is a widely misunderstood mushroom. It grows commonly on trees, and as opposed to popular belief, the mushroom consumes its parasites rather than the tree itself. Ah. Okay, so it eats all the bugs, and it helps the uh, tree grow. Very cool. Okay, now we got the door open. So let's go up there, and see what's in that door. We get some more information. Oh, wow. Look, it's got a little nook over here. I'm sitting on this one. That looks nice. 
Also, if you guys needed, uh, if you're following along with me, if you want an achievement, you just sit in one of these chairs for a minute, and it'll give you one. Just in case you didn't notice. The Trapped Fairy. That's a cool painting. Let's see what else we got here. Letters about weeds. 10th of August, dearest Arabella, I was taking a walk along a river in Somerset recently and noticed a site that I just had to write you about. In the water, I saw the brook chalice blooming. I've never seen or heard of its flowering before. None of my books mentioned it. It was so beautiful. Do you have any idea what would have caused this? Ever your friend, Edith. So she was walking along a river in Somerset recently and noticed the site. And in the water, the brook chalice was blooming. Is that one of the flowers? Yeah. Okay, so it's got to be in the water. The attic is closed. That's where one of the other seas is. Okay. Oh, cradle fern. Oh, it has eggs in it. Interesting. Might have to remember those. So it holds eggs, I wonder. Which, which other one did I have? Plant Nightfall? Okay, we got Nightfall, but I don't know how to do that one yet. Let's look around real quick. Um, Cradle Fern. Fern Painting. And what about Nightfall? Sunset Paintings. Grandma's Research. And then we got the Cradle Fern for Bird Eggs. And a Letter About Weeds. I don't exactly remember that one. The fairy painting. Let's look at the fairy painting real quick. What's this show? Looks like it's night. So maybe fairy painting will be for this one. And the letter about weeds. Probably the chalice. I think it's the one that did the flower. Oh, not flower, but the water. Yeah. Okay. I think we got the clues right now. Any other paintings to look at? Let's see anything in here. Ooh, we got a room. What do we got? Aquatic weed. Clark aquatic weed removal. Do you have a pond? Do you want to swim in it? Is it covered in slimy weeds? We are specialized in removing the following weeds. Algae, Himalayan bal uh, balsam, uh, brook chalice, and duckweed. Make an appointment today. Clark & Co. Certified Weed Removal and Agriculture Service. Okay. Yuiville. I would imagine that's another one. So we got a, ourselves a weed. And what is this? The Cradle Fern. So the last seed must be in the attic. And... Petition. Somerset Society for Wildlife Protection offers a petition to be present or presented to the Honorable House of Common. In recent years, hunts have been taking place near the Somerset River. Tragically, this has led to the decline and even extinction of some bird species. No longer can we hear the beautiful chimes like calls. We call upon the government to regulate hunting near the river of Somerset. We ask that they respect the breeding times of wildlife. If you agree, please sign below and return this letter to us. No expense attends signing. Um, uh, your signature, Diane Arabella Green. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's a cool signature. You even got it in green. Yep, definitely protect the animals, you know? Hunting is, uh, definitely necessary. But, uh, we shouldn't make them go to an extinction. Let's see what we got here. The Trapped Fairy, a folktale, written and illustrated by J.R.R. Kelly, Gripple Gate Publishing. So that was a picture in the hallway about that. Once upon a time, there was a little fairy who loved gazing at her own reflection in the water. She lost track of time, and the day turned into night. Nynx, goddess of night, noticed the little fairy. The moon was shining bright, but the fairy only had eyes for herself. Nyx took offense and decided to punish the little fairy. She placed the fairy into a nightfall and cast a spell on her. The little fairy fell in love with the moon and gazed upon the sky all night. Later, when the sun came up, the spell broke, just as the fairy woke up from her enchantment. The nightfall bud closed and trapped the fairy for eternity. Okay. I would imagine that's a hint for nightfall. Fairy story. Let's keep looking. 
My dear Nova, never forgotten. Oh, it's a kitty. Nice. Let's see. Letter from Eliza. Dearest friend, it seems our interest in visiting the private plant collection of Lord Spencer has gone unacknowledged. While disappointing, I am not sure it is worth pursuing scientific study in such places. On my recent visit to Brinsby, the young man showing us around had barely a basic knowledge of plants, and due to there being a large group of gentlemen in the party, all useful time and erudition was devoted to them and none given to the Constance and I. Uh, let us plan another trip of our own and perhaps we can see the specimens in their natural home habitats where they belong. Ever your faithful friend, Eliza. Not getting the attention they're looking for. What's this? Essence of Arnic flower. For sprains, strains, and joint pains. Tincture of red clover. Chamomile and red clover seems to soothe hot flushes. See, botany is important, man. You get a bunch of medicines to help people. Ooh, we got a bathroom. Look at this bad boy. Man, she had hot water and everything. Oh, well, the pipe looks like it's all messed up, but... Let's see. Bath geyser manual. A hot bath at the turn of a tap. The N30 bath geyser provides a rapid flow of hot water. Simply turn the tap and instantly hot water will appear. Can be used multiple times in a row without extra, any extra cost. Uh, let's see. Nice. She got her own freaking thing. And we got pipes all over the place, so we're going to have to fix this, it looks like. Let's see. We got a curved pipe. We got a T pipe. Where's this bad boy going? Probably right here. And then a curved pipe. Right there. Another one. Got this curve pipe. Right there. Two more. Perfect. I'm a plumber. Boom. Achievement unlocked. Who needs a plumber when I'm a plumber? Let's see. Wilson Plumbers for all plumbing and water system needs. Lady Arabella Green, 15th of May, 1890. Installation of disconnected pipes, total 14 shillings. Dear Arabella, here is our quote to fix the pipes of the geyser in your bathroom. Cost might seem high, but trust us, it's a complex job best left to professionals. Have a nice day, Frederick. Yeah. Yeah, I got that done. It's all good. Oh, we're going to put the plants in the water. It must be the weed that we need to put in there. Flush toilet. Achievement. Clean and tidy. Flush the toilet. Okay, before we do this... Oh, it looks like it's a temperature, too. What temperature do we need? I don't think we have that information yet. So I know it's going to be the... Not the nightfall. It's going to be the cradle... No, it's going to be the brook chalice. And... What's the petition one? Let's see. That was to stop hunting, right? Petition. Somerset River is typically the lead in decline and extinction of some bird species. Okay, so I would imagine that goes for this one too. Somerset Rivers. What's in here? Nice chair. And that thing was comfy. Letter from Montagu. Uh, Dear Lady Arabella, I wanted to thank you once again for your invaluable contributions during our recent meadow orchard research expedition. Your keen observations and deep knowledge of orchards was so helpful. Your dedication to the field is an inspiration to us all. I look forward to future collaborations and the continued exploration of the botanical wonders that surround us. I will put in a good word for you with Botanical Society. Warmest regards, Professor Montague. And we got a key for the attic. Yeah. Somerset River Trust. Seasonal newsletter, April 1890. Summer, uh, Somerset Shire. River swimming this season. Dear members, we want to make sure you can all enjoy swimming this summer, so we have cleared the most popular rivers in Somerset of all aquatic weeds. River Cam, the River Chew, and the River Sommer. 
uh, have all been cleared of weeds thanks to the service of Clark's Aquatic Weed Removal. Uh, thank you for your continued support. Thanks for the monthly donations. The rivers of Somerset are clean and weed free. So Somerset Rivers. We're going to go with that one. Bath Geyser. River Trust. What's this one? Official Government Health and Safety Warning. Uh, 1890, August 8th. It has been brought to our attention that the factory of Barton Ironworks has been illegally dumping scrap metal in rivers across Somerset. These rivers are now pulled with, polluted with rust, making them unsafe for swimming. Do not swim in the following rivers. River Cam, River Sama, River Chu. The river from was also affected by waste. Though oddly, the river is completely clear of rust pollution. We are still researching what led the, to that effect. The river from was also affected by the waste, but oddly, the river is completely clear of pollution. Mayor of Somerset. So, may, and that must be where the weeds are. Um, I don't think we have all the right ones in here. We'll have to check in a bit. Oh, the river from. Let's remember that. And maybe we know the temperature. Ah, here we go. River from. Average temperature, 25 degrees Celsius. That's going to be the one. So let's go and put the plants in there real quick. And maybe the petition now? River poster. Yeah, there we go. Okay. 25 degrees. Uh, let's go grab our plants. Where is it? The Cradle Fern, Nightfall, Sapphire, Gloom. Oh, we don't got it yet. We got to go to the attic. Let's go to the attic and unlock it. There we go. Let's go get our seed. Ooh, moths. Okay, before we look at any of that stuff, let's go find our seed real quick. Wow, this is cool. Where's the seed at? Here it is. I will... Okay, Brook Chalice. I will return here. Once I grow my seed in a duck. A mallard. Okay. We got the mallard. Let's go back down. Got a whole attic to look through. Now we got a plant. The Brook Chalice. That's the one, right? That is the one. Let's water it. And then the brook chalice wants to get in some warm 25 degrees Celsius water. Actually, I don't even know if that's warm. I'm a Fahrenheit guy. Okay. Let's see. This doesn't look like it's too warm. 25 degrees. Fill the bath. Come on, brook chalice, grow. Not going. Okay, drain it. Okay, we got the wrong. We got the wrong river. Which river is it? They enjoy. Okay, they got rid of all the weeds. And then the polluted ones. Do not swim in River Cam, River Sama, River Chu. The river from was also affected by the waste, though oddly the river is completely clear of rust pollution. Isn't that the one we looked at? Or am I wrong on that? Dearest Arabella, I was writing to share with you exciting discovery I made in the, my botanical studies. Turns out that some plants are particularly sensitive to sound and seem to thrive when exposed to music or melodies from their natural environment. I hope to share more of my findings with you in the near future and would be delighted if you could join me in my research. Your sincere friend, Marianne. Okay. Um. River Sommer, Cam, Brute. Hmm. Research expeditions. Let's see what else we got. What information did I miss? That was the petition. A folk's tale. Young man. Okay. Let's go over here real quick. We got that.
plumbing service. None of those are the ones. The trapped fairy. Uh, maybe this. Pool swims. Let's see. Weed removal. It's gotta be that one. Clearly it ain't. Average temperature, 25 degrees. Three bridges. It shows bridges. There's something I'm missing here. Clearly, but... Whoa, what's this? We got bells up here. This must be the... Oh, yeah, we gotta play music. For bird calls. Ah, okay, so the birds got, um, they were over hunted, and so whatever flower is out there needs that, the music to play. Okay. Play it yourself, home, piano, forte collection, bird calls. And we gotta do the right bird. That's pretty cool. We still gotta figure out what the temperature is supposed to be. Cradle fern. Fairy. Somerset recently noticed a site. A brook chalice is blo blooming. So Somerset. Unlock. Okay. Let's see if there's a Somerset River then. Oh, these are all the rivers. Mother truck. And it also says length. Okay, let's go look around for more clues before we go and do that. Let's go into the attic. We've already been in here. Let's go into the uh, the actual attic, not the bell tower. See what we got in here. Okay, we got a moth spawning calendar. Pretty cool. And we got all different moths. And, oh, and okay. I mean bird hawk. There's a bunch of moths, and here they are. I wonder what we're gonna need those for. Let's see what's up here. What's this for? Rusty pig. Barren ironworks. The site of plants. Some scientists have theorized that plants have photoreceptors in their leaves and stems which allows them to see the color of light. This means that flowers can tell the time of day and know when to open or close their buds. The exact time that flowers bloom is different for each flower but most do appear to respond to light and the color of light in some way. Horticulturists and a botanist have made use of this knowledge to trick difficult flowers into blooming at any time they like. That's pretty cool. Gotta confuse them. What do we got here? Oh, we gotta get in different colors. So we're gonna have to use that maybe on the night one. What do we got here? Dinner invitation, March 1863 Green Bay Hall. My dear niece, I fear the window may be closing for you to find a suitable husband. I've arranged a dinner for you to meet my neighbor's son, Edward. He is successful in business in London. Your cousins, William and Thomas, may well aspire to become accomplished scientists, but for you, Arabella, it is better to make yourself useful in the small duties of life for which you will be loved and appreciated. Your studious nature will no doubt be valuable should you have a son, but it would be foolish to allow such a folly to come before the important things in life. I am confident this is what your parents would have wanted. Dinner will be from 5 o'clock on Sunday. Remember to wear a becoming dress. Yours very sincerely, Aunt Agnes. You know, the aunt's not wrong, but making a choice on what you want to do you got to understand the consequences of it. you want to focus your life on a career or something like that go for it but you might have a hard time having a family but if you want to be the stay-at-home person that's cool too the botanist digest the botanist digest a monthly journal of bot a botanical news uh, let's see this month in conversation with professor monta goo leading expert in british meadow orchards in his words, every plant, every leaf, and every meadow holds secrets waiting to be unlocked by... My aim is simply to uncover some of those mysteries. 
Professor John Montague, renowned botanist, sheds light on his groundbreaking work in the world of meadow orchards and other botanical wonders. With decades of research and numerous publications to his name, Professor Montague's contributions to the field have been nothing short of revolutionary, including discoveries of a new species such as the Dactylorhiza, a Montague, or Hood Marsh Orchid. That one sounds easier. Okay. Okay, let's look at that river thing one more time. Because it's got to be that, that river that I was saying, the farm one. It says 25 degrees Celsius. Is there anything I was missing? That's that. Let's see. Where, which one was it that said that? It wasn't that one. I think it's in here. Nope. Was it this one? Nope, not that one. Okay, it was this one. The river Froms is also affected by the waste, though oddly the river is completely clear of rust pollution. We are still researching what led to that effect. Okay. Huh. So it was affected by it, but it was clear. Okay, so maybe... Oh. Alright, maybe we did choose the right one. No, no, uh, 25 degrees Celsius. What about that pig? Not this way. It's not that way either. It's... No, it was that way. Mother truck. Up into the attic. And the pig. Rusty pig. Maybe I gotta put the pig in the water. Because it had rust. Let's go over here and check. So, if I put the pig in there. 25 degrees Celsius. Will it grow now? Come on, Brooke Chalice. Yeah, look at that. We got growth. Oh, that's awesome. It likes rest. How am I supposed to pick that up? My friend wrote to me about the brook chalice. 30. Yeah, we got it. Grow the brook chalice. The brook chalice prefers to grow in rivers with a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. We got that. The plant naturally filters the water from rust and metal. Unfortunately, they get removed often, as most people prefer their ponds to be weed-free. Huh. Oh, and I can pick it up. Nice. Let's go put it in the, the plant room. Alright. Oh, we got the mushroom over here, too. So let's go put this one in the plant room. And we got a spot right there. Let's go grab that mushroom, too. I'm here, Mr. Mushroom, Sapphire Gloom. And boom. We got like five more plants to do, it looks like. Alright, let's head back up. Okay, we're back up here. Let's see, we have... We got all the clues? Looks like we have all the clues. Oh, I think we got two plants left here. So the cradle fern. Does it need moss? I know it needs the eggs. The bird calls. Oh, okay. Letter about melodies. Off calendar sites of plants. Fishing. Hmm. I'd imagine it has a specific type of bird. I don't think that's all right, though. Oh, we got two fern paintings. That's why. There we go. That is right. So we need a specific uh, egg. So which bird? We got the fern. But we got the pitcher right there, too. Maybe that's the type of egg we need. Where were those eggs? I think they were back here somewhere. Oh, there we go. Which egg was it? This one. Crested owl egg. Okay. Crested owl egg. That's the one we need. Let's start the seed uh, over here. Crested owl egg. Then I think we gotta play the song for it. Where you at? Cradle fern. Water. 
Okay. And up here into the bell tower. I think I need a certain song. What do we got here? Crested Owl. So we got... Okay, let me write this down. Okay. We got it written down. Let's see if this works. It's gonna be E first. And then we got C. D. We got E. G. F. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's awesome. They did a really good job on this game. Achievement unlocked, Cradle Fern. Grow the Cradle Fern. The Cradle Fern is used by the Crested Owl as a nest and it turned the plant has grown dependent on the owl's chime like call to grow. That's cool. Okay, let's put this one down in the plant room. All right, and we got a nice little spot for it. We'll put it right here. That looks good. Four more plants. Look at all these things. Nice. Okay, let's make sure we have all the, the clues for the night one. Add clue. Got the moths. Moth calendar. Sight of plants and moth poster. Okay, so we gotta figure out what's going where. I know we have those night paintings that the grandma was doing in her vault. But we gotta figure out what goes with what for that plant. Like, which one is it? Nightfall progress. 1830 to 1831. This is, uh... Okay, let's see. Is there a month? Task for this month, monitor Nightfall Seedling. And research notes, I've been trying to encourage Nightfall Bloom for a little while now. Determined to prove more just the myth. Exactly occurs a mystery. Okay, so that's not helping. How about this one? One in record. Let's find the, uh, the notes for this. Sunset paintings, grandma's research, fairy painting fairy story. Let's go look at the fairy story and the painting. We gotta get all the information in the right spot. Not here. We're in the wrong way. Go through this way. And through here. So the fairy painting should be right here. Uh, fairy trapped... The trapped fairy. Okay. So it's at night. That didn't have a year or anything. And then we had that, um, the tail of the fairy. Right here. Folk tale. Once upon a time, the fairy's little love gazing, reflection in the water. She lost track of time and the day turned into night. Goddess of the night, noticed the little fairy, the moon shining bright. The fairy only had eyes for herself. Placed the fairy into nightfall. He's upon the sky all night. Later, when the sun came up, the spell broke. Just as the fairy woke up, the enchantment nightfall bud closed and trapped. Okay, so just as the fairy woke up from her enchantment, the nightfall bud closed and trapped the fairy for eternity. Huh. But when the sun comes up. Okay, what other ones do we have? Trapped moths, sight of plants. Let's go look at the moth thing. How's the moth thing tie into it? I think we need to change the light on that camera up top. Flowers growing. Uh, Guardian Curiosity's trap moth. Sometimes a moth can become trapped inside a flower bud if it closes in the morning. Ooh. Okay. So the moth is the fairy. So the moth is then forced to use the bud as a resting place until it opens again later. Some flowers only bloom short periods during the year. So if the moth is unlucky, the flower bud won't open again until many months later. So which moth? Hummingbird, elephant, mint, angel, six burnt, garden tiger, swallow, ant moth. I don't see anything that says like a fairy or anything like that. I'm trying to see if there's any uh, any of the words that go with it. 
Okay, and then we also had something else. The moth poster, sight of plants. What was sight of plants? Let's trap moths. Let's go up top. Sight of plants. Some scientists have theorized that plants have photoreceptors in their leaves and allow them to see colors of the light. This means that flowers can't tell the time of day and know when to open or close their buds. The exact time that flower blooms is different for each flower. Most do appear to respond to light and the color of light in some way. Okay. So we gotta use one of these. Yellow, orange. I'd imagine like this blue one or something. Is it? Oh. Interesting. Okay, so maybe it's... It has to go in it has to go from night to day right so it would be like red orange blue or yellow the so blue red orange yellow let's go get the plant real quick let's play around with it so let's go get this night plant some soil nightfall Water it up. Okay. Go up top. Put it in front of this. Let's see if this does anything. Nope. Okay, we gotta figure out what colors are gonna go in what order. And I'm, I have a feeling those paintings are what is going to matter. And they had dates, but these have dates too. Let's see. May. So we got to figure out which moth. Because then this is going to tell the the month. I mean, birds, six spot, brunette. Which one is it? The moths then force the flower. Okay. Is there anything that says what moth it is? Trap the moth. Oh, okay. Look at her wings. She's got red and brown. Is there any moth that looks like that? Red with, and brown with spots. Like that. That right there. Garden tiger moth. Look at that. Oh, it matches. Okay, we're making something here. So, garden tiger moth. Let's see which one that is. September. Alright, September. Now, let's go back to the grandma's vault and look at the paintings. Which were in here. September, let's see, July, May, May, October, April, June, September. So we got, okay, let me write this down. Okay, all wrote and down. We got the colors. Let's get over there. Gotta get back to the attic. It's exciting. We're making progress. And go up to the top. Here we go. Now we need blue. So I was right on that. Yellow. Orange. Red. Man, I was I was close. I had the yellow out of place, I guess. Alright, let's try. Come on, nightfall. Oh yeah, look at that. That's a cool looking plant. That's a really cool looking plant. Achievement! Nightfall, we grew it. That's the prettiest one yet. Seeing the nightfall bloom is a rare event. The flower only blooms with September sunset. Uh, night pollinators active in September, such as the garden tiger, often get trapped once the bud closes for the rest of the year. That would suck. Okay, let's take it to the old plant room. We got a gatehouse delivery. Yeah. Okay, we're in the plant room. Place this bad boy. 
and let's head to the gatehouse. Okay, we reached the gatehouse, and we got another key. The formal garden. All right. All right, let's head to the formal gardens. All right. Let's see where this thing is. If I remember right. Oh, it might. No, where was it? Let's look at the map. If you're lost, look at the map. Maps. And the formal garden is number 13. Ah, okay. It's through the kitchen area. Let's go. We got this. Through the kitchen. Okay, I lied. It was through the back, uh, back terrace. Went to the kitchen, didn't find nothing. Okay, it's right there. We found it. Let's get in there. We got three more plants, I think. The formal garden. This must be the nice area. Lime it up. Ooh. Three new plants added. Oh, it's fancy over here. Well, they got a nice picnic and everything. Anything else over here that I can grab? What's this? Newspaper article. Bonnet's illustrated penny paper. It was a message. Local man reports mysterious signal. A gentleman farmer has reported sightings of mysterious blinking light coming from caves near his home in Cheddar. In his own words, I was walking my dog and lost track of time a little. It soon became dark and I decided to make the walk back home. On the way to my house is a tiny cave, and as I walked by I noticed a blinking light pattern case from the cave entrance. I was sure it was one of those Morse code messages. When I approached the cave the light source vanished and nobody was there. I'm convinced that what I saw was the Morse code abbreviation for attention. I will never forget that one abbreviation as it was the first message I learned in Morse code. Local authorities have assured our journalists that there have been no recent military activities or exercise in the area. So the mystery remains unsolved. <laughs> I know that's what it was because I learned Morse code and that's the only thing I learned. Ooh, we're gonna have to fill this up. That's cool. Ooh, we got a seed. Oh, it goes way out here. Hello. What is this? Spring dance shrub. Flowering bush. Used to grow in the gardens, but has completely disappeared when I was off on my travel. Well, we're going to have to figure out why. Imagine trimming that up. Get that weed whacker out. Okay, we got this. Oh, we don't need to do that. Let's, uh, we'll leave that alone for now. Let's do some more researching on what we got to do. See if we can find anything else to read. Oh, this is kind of big, look. Goes all the way out here, too. Alright, let's take our time around here. Telegraph note. Mr. Bennett, the telegraph you ordered arrived while you were off on your travels. They delivered it by boat. I left it at the boathouse, since I didn't know where you'd like to keep it. There appears to be a Morse code manual inside the case as well, Jimmy. Okay, so something with Morse code. We, uh, just like that previous one. I have to figure that out. And... Note about Lon. My sweet Hazel, are you keeping well today? Jimmy's only gone and broken the lawn mower again. If it weren't for my war injury, I wouldn't be letting him loose with the mower. He said he ran over some hard objects down in the long grass near the pond, but with my bad leg I couldn't get down there to check. I had a brief look and couldn't see anything. Sometimes I wonder about the boy's sensibilities. Save me some of your lovely scones. Here is always Mr. Bennett. Some scones, man. Sounds good. Oh, here we go. Manual of Military Engineering, Section 4, Communication over Long Distances. The method of communication over long distances must be selected according to the requirements of the scenario. If the message contains no sensitive information, or there is no enemy presence within the communication area, an open method of communication such as telegraphy may be used. If open communication is permissible, both receivers may still benefit from the abbreviation of messages. See Plate 2 for a table of commonly used military abbreviations using telegraphy and Morse code. Closed communication methods rely more upon both technologies and ingenuity. In the case of secrecy and obs obfuscation, uh, planning is required and both parties must have knowledge of the method of encryption used. Section 4, number 3, a brief history of long-range military communications. Ooh, we got some reading. 
Ancient Greece, water telegraphy and torch telegraphy. Ancient Rome, smoke signaling. 16th century, beacons and pigeons. 18th century, Murray shadow telegraph. 18th century, radiated telegraph. 19th century, Morse code. Telegraphy abbreviations in prosigns. R is Roger, transmission received, over, invitation to transmit, out, end of transmission, await, I must pause, please wait, verified, message is verified, uh, say again, request for repetition, correction, proceed, text was an error, and break, start new section of message, attention, message begins, over and out, end of contact. We're going to have to look back at that when we can actually do that. Oh, they got guano. That's bat poop. Wood ash, seaweed, manure, coffee, peat. These are all fertilizers. And what's this? The Flower Growing Companion, a monthly illustrated journal. Tips for growing hydrangeas. Or hydrangeas. Hydrangeas are beautiful flowers that contain athnic science, uh, which is a pigment that can change color depending on the pH level of its environment. The colors can vary between red, purple, and blue. You guys are going to just hate on me in them comments about how I can't pronounce this stuff. I know it. Oh, look at all these pots. Okay, garden supplies. New materials for garden pots. Granite and terracotta. Sandstone, marble, and obsidian. Okay, we're going to have to figure out what kind of pot it wants. And some fertilizer for whichever plant that is. And then one of them needs Morse code. I don't know exactly how I'm going to be doing that, but it's also telegraph, so maybe... Flashes of light or something. Um, kind of like those SOS. Oh, we're on the other side of this now. Blocked by a darn table. Oh, we got some fool's emerald. This one looks cool. A friend gifted me these seeds, so I don't know much about them. The marvel of bioluminescence. In the darker corners of our world, there are plants and organisms that are able to produce their own light. These plants, fungi, and insects are most often found in areas of low light, such as dark forests, deep oceans, and gloomy caves. Recent discoveries show that chemicals such as luciferin, luciferin are responsible for this glowing effect. It is not known what this glowing effect is used for, but it could be a communication with others of the same species or to attract pollinators or food. Scientists believe there are many bioluminescent species waiting to be discovered. Those are really cool. Kind of like the... I think it's like the angler fish in the Marianas Trench. That's really deep. They're like blind, but they got lights on them. Uh, plant chemicals. Jasmine, poppy, opium. Ooh. They got the drugs in here, man. Uh, oh, luciferin. Fool's emerald. Isn't that the one we're trying to make? Yeah. Okay. Let's see what else we got around here. Sincere greetings. Dearest Arabella, I was delighted after our recent mentoring session. You do excellent work as a fellow scholar of the natural world. I recall the spring dance shrub that once grew in your garden before you departed on your travels. How wonderful it would be to see it growing again. I have been compiling plant specimens that require pollination to mature into their adult stage. I wonder if the spring dance shrub is one of these plants. Ever your affectionate friend, Lavinia. Okay, so clearly we need to get some chemical compounds out of some stuff. We got two seeds, I think, so far. We got the Fool's Emerald, the Spring Dance Shrub, and we need to get the Ocelotti. Okay, let's go to this other area over here. What's this? The bird. Here you go, bird. Am I supposed to fly you somewhere? I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this thing. Clearly, I'm supposed to take it somewhere over here. Fly, birdie. It's not going to it. Maybe I'm moving up too fast on it. There you go. Okay, you can't get too close. Maybe there's another one. 
gonna open this. Ah, look at that. It goes back to the old place. Uh, we got some granite. Okay, we got uh, soil pH research. This is a whole whole uh, grid here or table to show us. And what's this? Anthean and aside research, spring dance shrubs. Okay, different colors for pigment. There's got to be another feeder. Goes all the way over there. Dear Miss Green, I have recently heard of your involvement in the mentoring of aspiring botanists. Botany is a field that demands a thorough understanding of its complexities, and while I admire your dedication, the saying, the blind leading the blind, does come to mind. All just aside, I do hope your endeavors in mentoring will yield some semblance of progress. Sincerely, Professor Thornton, 1887. And I feel like every time she gets a letter from these people, they just freaking, they start throwing shade at him. Okay, let's see. Uh, my dearest Bennett, thank you so much for the lovely bunch of rhubarb from your nephew's garden. He needn't have sent anything in return for the herbal poultice I gave him for his little one. But I am grateful all the same. I know he hasn't the money to fetch the doctor. Since you said he cannot read a note, please send him my thanks when you see him. Faithfully yours, Hazel. Yeah. I'm making medicine. Like I said, botany is good. Good stuff. Anything over here? This place is so big. Mixed seeds. For garden birds. Prepared by Freewinds Garden and Farmstead Supply Company. Highest quality, hygienically blended, attracts a host of garden birds such as bluebirds, finches, robins, and warblers with this seed prepared at the highest quality levels. Simply spread the seeds on an appropriate bird table or feeder surface and observe the delights of your feathered garden neighbors. Yep, here's another one. So we're gonna have to move that bird over here somehow. I'd imagine, since we can't be close to it, we're gonna have to just alternate them. And then try to stay away from it. So if there's the birds over on this feeder, let's put it right there. Now imagine if we get too close, it's going to fly all the way home. So let's be very careful now. And this one's right next to it. We're going to have to go this way. Come on, birdie. Go around again. Gonna take a sec, but to do it the right way means I don't have to do it twice. Okay. Now we gotta go get the feeder. And the birdie's gonna wanna come to this one. Good job, birdie. Let's grab this feeder and go down into the hedges. And when I do it, I gotta go run the other way. Run. Mm. The other way. Careful now. I gotta go all the way around. There's a reason why it's open on these sides. There you go. There you go, birdie. Follow you. Come back around. There's that bird that's right there. And... Boom. Run, run, run. run for your life. Don't let the birdie get scared away. It knows where the food is. Let's go this way. And run. Okay, it's there. Okay, we're gonna have to be real careful. The close one. I can't go back that way. Okay, we're gonna go around. And we're going this way. 
You cool, birdie? I'm doing this for you. Oh, man. Okay, I gotta be real careful. That bird's right there. And if I mess this up... Okay, well, what I could probably do is this. There we go. Okay, let's leave her there. Now I gotta figure out what plant needs that bird. Let's go look for some clues. And this one is in the boathouse. I don't even know where that is. Well, the bird's there, so let's leave the bird there. Where would I find said boathouse? Not over here, right? Oh, this goes right back to the front. Let's see. Oh, maybe... Oh, it goes down here. We haven't gone down here yet. Oh, look at that. Got a whole pond. How cool is that? Oh, we got a painting. Nice. Unfinished painting. Achievement. Got an art lover out there. What else we got around here? Oh, the boathouse is over there. I bet it's locked in it. Yep, we gotta find a key. And what is this? A handle. Oh. It's a handle for maybe the fountain? Or a water or something. Inspect. Okay, we gotta figure out where we're gonna put that. Just, uh, put that down for a second. Spiritualism book. Note attached to the book. My dearest cousin, whilst I hold a deep fascination for the pursuit of knowledge and science, I must admit that the subject of spiritualism is not one that particularly captivates me. Therefore, I must return this book to you. However, I appreciate your efforts in sharing your interest with me with affection. Arabella, Femin let's see, Phenomenon of Spiritualism. The Will-O-Wisp. A glowing spirit of marshes, forests, and caves, the Will-O-Wisp is an eerie ap apparition that has long been the subject of both fear and fascination. It makes its appearance to lost travelers in dark, isolated places and beckons them to follow with its beguiling, blinking light. Many a wanderer has followed the wisp alluring light across marshes or into caves, never to be seen again. Take heed those who venture into dark places, resist the temptation of the will-o'-wisp, uh, shimmering radiance. Turn back before it's too late. Spoopy. Okay, we got a fenced off area. That fountain is on. I'm guessing for the other area we gotta fill up, I'd imagine. Okay, let's see if there's a some kind of handle uh opening around here. Maybe it's right up here. Yep. Get that water in there. Very cool. Oh, does that mean we can travel? Oh, that's cool. Frogger. It's in here. Oh, this is where we gotta put that plant, probably. Into the darkness. That's kind of weird. You feel like my lady is either really tall or I don't know. The camera angle is weird. Okay, this one is for. Which one was it? So let's see if we can just do one of these. Uh, Fool's Emerald Spring Dance Shrub. Plant Chemicals. I would imagine that this one's the Plant Chemicals. And... Let's see... I'm imagining one of... Which one actually, uh... Makes light, I wonder. Trying to figure that out. So we know that the chemical compounds in wildflowers. This one is called the plant chemicals. Which we know is that one. Bioluminous. Bioluminescence. It's plants and fungi. So one of the plants glows. We don't know which one that is yet. 
And then this one. Spring dance shrub. Uh, once grew in your uh, garden, departed on your travels, however. I recall the spring dance shrub that once grew in your garden before you departed on your travels. How wonderful it would be to see it growing again. I've been compiling plant specimens that require pollination to mature into the adult stages, and I wonder if a spring dance shrub is one of these plants. So it needs pollination, so I would imagine the spring dance shrub is the one that needs a bird. Okay, so bird seeds. And then this is the greeting card, right? Yeah. So I would imagine the greeting card goes with it. Let's see. The water's flowing now. Maybe I have to go to the bathroom or something. Now, we're gonna need... Maybe we need a certain pot for that one, I'm not sure yet. Let's look around some more. Gotta see if we got all the clues. We got the pot. Flower growing companion for growing hydrangeas. Hydrangeas are beautiful flowers that contain uh, anthocyanins, which is a pigment that can change color depending on the pH level of its environment. Okay, so. Flowering bush. Completely disappeared. Get the seed. I wonder if that's this one. Soil. Pigment. I'm gonna start throwing it in. Pot catalog. Hydrangeas. Nope. Throw in the guesses. Okay, none of that. None of that. So which one needs the, a special pot? Guano, Ashby, let's see. This one is for the Morse code. Lovely scones. This one was talking about the... What was it? Note about the lawn. So that gave us the, um, the location of the handle. The telegraph you ordered arrived while you were on the travels. They delivered some of the boat. There appears to be a Morse code manual inside the case as well. So we can't do the Morse code thing until we get in the boathouse. So we gotta find a key somewhere. And I would imagine the one spring dance shrub. That's the one that probably needs the birds. And did we find all the clues? Definitely not. Bird garden. We're still missing a clue there. And telegraph. Okay, let's see where the... We got a map, so... Bird garden and telegraph. Maps. Okay, that's second floor. Oh, we gave more numbers on this one. It's bigger now. So, bird garden is 16. Okay, and then... Where's the telegraph? I don't see where the telegraph was. The grotto, pond, side terrace. All right, let's head to the the bird garden again. And we clearly missed one here. So let's see what information we didn't get here. This takes us back, so that's not the way. What have we not gotten here? So this is the pigment thing and the soil research. any notes around here? There's something I uh, missed. Pretty sure I got this. Letter from Hazel. Oh, the bird garden is over here. That bird's out of there now. Oh, here we go. Boat house. Nice. Got the boathouse key. And we got a bird poster. Let's see. Just like bees, birds can pollinate flowers, but did you know that birds have a preference to pollinate flowers of certain colors? 
The above chart shows which color of flowers attract which birds to your garden. Red flowers, the bullfinch robin. Okay. So what? let's see what this bird looks like. It's black with a white stomach, it looks like. Can you see? Nope. It's uh, got an orange face and a white tummy and like a gray back. Looks like a bullfinch. So the bullfinch... Robin. Yeah. Um, so the bullfinch is the red flowers it needs. So it's attracted to red flowers, so we gotta make it red. Let's see if that's all the clues for that one. Uh, let's get back to it. Index. Chapter 5. And we got the bird poster. There it is. So the okay, so the pots I need to do for it, and the soil pH levels. So let's see what we need to do. We got to get it to be red. So what does it need to get to the red level? We got to go back to that chart for the pH levels. So red is between 12 and 14. For pH. Let's write that down. Okay, wrote that down, and let's see what this one is. Um, soil pH research. So we got it be between 12 and 14. So 13.2, I see that one. That's gotta be the one. So sandstone and seaweed. Okay, we got sandstone and seaweed we gotta work on. So we need a sandstone pot, and it's gonna be the spring dance shrub. Uh, I think I went the wrong way. Where am I going? I gotta go back this way. Go over here. Let's go get the sandstone. Let's see which one was it? I think it's that brown one up top. That's marble sandstone. This is sandstone. Okay. Then we gotta put the shrub in it. That there, some dirt, and sand, uh, the spring dance shrub. Let's water it up. Okay, it's white. Now we gotta go over here and put some seaweed on it. There you go. Make it red. Yeah. Now that it's red, we can take it to the bird. The pollinator. Just like the bees do. And we already got the bee or the, the bird over there. We just gotta put this on the table and redo it. It's right there. Okay, nice and easy. Nice and easy now. There you go. Let's go around to the other side so the bird don't run away. It's doing it. Nice. We have got it. Oh, wow. Look at all the birds coming back. Awesome. Spring dance shrub. That's the way to do it. The spring dance shrub contains anthocyanin. I can't say that word. Uh, causing it to change colors depending on the pH levels of the environment. Robins love red flowers and will be attracted to red variants of this shrub. Yes. Let's go put this thing in the plant room. Okay, we're back in the plant room. And boom. We got two more left. Alright. Progress is being made. Okay, let's go and get that boathouse open. Since we got the key now. Where are we going? We're going this way. Alright, we gotta go find that boathouse. It was over by that pond. And we got two more plants left. So the one, the Morse code, let's see if we can put some of this on here. News article. Let's start throwing these down real quick. Notes about the telegraph, military codes, bioluminescence. Okay, we don't have everything. More clues. The telegraph. And a bunch in the boathouse. 
I don't know what the telegraph thing is, uh, or it's a location, or or what. So let's go down to the bow house and see. Go get some more of those clues. Once you know which clues it is, it does help, definitely, because then you can just go through them and look for things. Let's unlock the bow house. We're in. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. Man, this place is awesome. Like, why would you ever need to leave if you got something like this? Oh, what's this? Telegraph. Oh, wow, we're gonna need that. International Morse code for the transformation of telegram signals. Okay, we'll come back and grab that. So we got another thing that for the seeds. Ooh. Hello. Egyptian goose. Quack, quack, quack. We found them all. Inspect all the ducks. Awesome. Okay. Let's go inside. Well, that's one heck of a bow house. Supplies invoice. Bought of Williams Folly education and school material supplied Twerton Bath to Lady Arabelle Green. Arabella Green. 10th June 1890. Classroom desk with chairs. Classroom note box. Uh, chalkboard, ink, black, blue box. Writing materials, display case, teaching desk. Total. Okay. Got an inventory. Or a receipt. How weeds spread. Garden weeds and pests. How weeds spread. The weeds can take over an area quite rapidly. Some weeds have adapted in order to spread their seeds as far away as possible. The plant itself does not have much control over this, but trust nature uh, to lend a helping hand. Wood, avens, and goose grass have seeds with a hook and designed to attach to the fur of passing animals. They are then carried and dropped up to several miles away. Interesting. Dandelions have seeds with an attached feathery puff that allowed them to simply be carried by the wind to a far away location. Other plants such as lords and ladies wrap their seeds in an attractive berry which birds consume and then later deposit as waste a great distance away. A final more mysterious example is the seed of the oscillate. Ooh, this is the one we need. It is known to be picked up by critters who take then take it back to their nest. As soon as the critter goes to sleep, the seed sprouts into bloom. It is not quite understood how the plant is able to detect when the animal is asleep. Oh, well, that's interesting. So we're going to have to figure out a way to get the plant to know that an animal's asleep. Ooh, there's a seed right there. Yeah. Nice. Okay. We already did that. Got a music box. Okay, that's not doing what it's supposed to. It's a cylinder. Okay, I'm gonna use wax cylinders, I guess. That goes all over the world. Oh, maybe it's gotta... Okay, we gotta use one of these. What's this one? Animal husbandry and rehabilitation. Animal heartbeat rates given in uh, beats per minute. Okay. Oh, and it's got a sleeping time, too, probably. Yeah. Cow, horse, rabbit. True... What kind of animal is it that we need? Okay, we know that clue. Animal heart speeds and weed and seeds. And then the Morse code thing, that's going to be for this. Alright, we got all of them for that. Nice. We'll have to work on that in a bit. And what do we got here? Foraging critters, game rules, game setup. Shuffle the food cards and place the stacks face down in the center of the board. Place the food tokens around the food cards on the board. Place the animals on the start tile. Players choose their animal by rolling the dice. The highest roller chooses first. Play in the game. Take turns to roll the dice and move your animal along the woodland path. The highest roller goes first. If you land on a food tile, pick up a food card. If your animal matches the card, you can collect the token specified on the food card. If you land on a gray squirrel tile, it steals all of your food tokens and they must return to the board. The player who has the most food tokens in their nest at the end of the game is the winner. Woodland cards, rabbit, wood, mouse, red squirrel, field cards, animal cards, 
meadow cards. So the gray squirrel. Okay. Sounds like the gray squirrel might be the what we're looking for. Oh, woodland cards. Let's see what this one is. Woodland mouse. Wood mice are very small and live in woodlands, but also many other habitats, including fields, parks, meadows, and gardens. Moles live underground and have poor vision. They find food and mates using their sense of smell and touch. Red squirrels live in nests high up in the trees. They sometimes forage food back to the nest to keep late. Okay, red squirrel. That's a good start. Gray squirrel. The North American gray squirrel is larger than the red and with smaller ears. It forages foods, but can also digest some seeds straight away. Hedgehogs are protected from predators by their coats of needles. They live in burrows in both in field and woodland habitats. Rabbits live in many habitats and burrows underground. They come above to graze in the morning and evening. Okay. Animal card. Field card. Meadow card. Nice. Okay. So it's the red one. Red squirrel. Asleep at 120 beats. And which one's this? Inspect. Song by... Okay. 120. We need 120 beats. There we go. Meadow's Bliss. Now let's go get the plants. Soil. Now plant the ocelot. Or, yeah, ocelot. That's not working. Interesting. Maybe I need to play music to it first. Oh, there it goes. That's awesome. Look at that. It's dancing. Nice. The ocelot seed is picked up by small animals, such as red squirrels, who then store it inside their nest. Once the animal falls asleep, the ocelot depends up on the heartbeat variations to break open and bloom. That's pretty cool. All the clues. Alright, now we gotta work on that last one. Oh, before we do that, let's take this one to the plant room. So we can get that achievement. All right, we're heading to the plant room. And I just remembered that I got to go get that telegraph. But we got a ways to go to all the way back to the boathouse. Let's see. And we got to figure out how this works. I know we probably put it in the cave. And then do we have all the... Yeah, we got everything now. Okay, we got to get back there, grab the telegraph, and bring it back. Okay, we're back at the boathouse. Let's grab this telegraph and let's bring this bad boy back up there and see how we can use it. Okay, I put the telegraph on the table. Let's see. Open up. How does this thing work? Well, that's a long one. Okay. Apparently, there's an achievement if we do an SOS. So let's see if we can do that. So, S. And then O. And then S. Achievement. There we go. Okay. Let's figure out what we need to do for this other plant. First of all, let's get it in the seed. And then we need the uh, bull's emerald. We water it. Okay, it started. Now, let's put it in here. And let's go read some of those clues real quick to see exactly what we need to do with it. There's some stuff up here about it. 
Chemical compounds and wildlife flowers. Luciferin. Maybe we gotta spell that out or something. And what else do we got out here? I know there's some more over here. Maybe this is gonna tell us because there was a Morse code. Um, what was it? Pamphlet thing over here? What is it? Let's see. Okay, we got this news article. It was a message, and that's in caps. So, a local man reports mysterious signal. I was walking my dog. A blinking light coming from the cave. It soon became dark and decided to walk back home on the way home. The house tiny cave. As I walked, I noticed a blinking light pattern case in the cave entrance. And it was a tension. I'll never forget this one. Okay. So, attention. What is the attention abbreviation? We go here. Attention is K-A. So maybe we gotta do K-A to make it go. Is that what we need to do? So K is a long line dot K and then A. There it goes. Nice. It's the last one. Look, it's all bright and glowy. Oh, is it going to brighten up in here, too? That's awesome. All right. That was it. Fool's Emerald. The Fool's Emerald is a vine that contains Luciferin which allows it to create light. They grow in caves where they use the light to communicate with each other, very much like Morse code. Botanical researcher, complete all the plants in the herbarium. Nailed it. Up oh, in the gatehouse. Before we do that, let's take this plant to the plant room. Get that other achievement. I'm going in circles here, we gotta go this way. And this should be the end of the game. Right. This place is so cool. A game about plants and it was actually really awesome. Some of the puzzles were pretty challenging. Here we go. Achievement. Yeah. Flower arranging. Place a plant on every saucer in the flower room. Now I'm about to go get the last one. I get that thousand gamer score. Here we go to the gatehouse. Oh, we gotta post the herbarium. Mayflower Publishing House. We finished it. Now we're sending it out. All right. A game by Balloon Studios. One year later, there's more. Oh wow, we're playing again. Oh look, we got birds in here. Green School of Botany. Ceremonial key. Presented to Lady Arabella Green by the Women's Education Union on the occasion of her opening the Green School of Botany. That's pretty cool. Oh, look at she's got a whole class in here. Herbarium. Those are all herbariums. Those are hers, probably. That we just did. Oh, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Ring the school bell. Forgotten floor less than air purifying flowers. Windmill wart. Awesome. Alright, let's read this on here. Teacher, lady... Arabella Green, Eliza, Jessica, Catherine, Ada, Mary, and Amsina. Amasina. That's an interesting name. That's her students. Letter from sister. Pop good household. My dear Flora, I am terribly sorry your herbarium didn't get picked up by uh, for publishing. 
though I am most excited about your new plans to turn Botany Manor into a, bot a botanical academy. I look forward to visiting the school and meeting the talented students you have taken under your wing. Let's hope they can carry on our fight. Lots of love, Elizabeth. Yes, Arabella, I hope you don't mind me still calling you by your childhood pet name. Flora, huh? Forgotten Flora. A herbarium by Arabella Green. That's pretty cool. And put it here. Time to teach. The end. Reach the end of the game. Wow, that was a really awesome game. Alright everyone, that was Botany Manor. You guys made it to the end. Thank you very much for your support. I really appreciate it. I like entertaining you guys. Um, also, this game, uh, in terms of a puzzle game, I thought it was awesome. Uh, the puzzles were challenging, and uh, they, they definitely kept you thinking, which is great for a puzzle game. Also, the fact that the whole theme was on like flowers and growing them, and they actually did stuff, that was really cool too. Hey everyone, you made it to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. On the bottom of the screen, if you like, comment, share, subscribe, you can support the channel. Also, check out the videos above. That'll take you to more content from Valhalla Gaming TV. Thanks again. Later.